Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street. I'm John Cole Morgan and it's so lovely to have you here. And you're our early birds. You get to see our wonderful little early bird special that we've got today. This is a fabulous bundle. Really, really, really fantastic bundle here. You have got a half meter of chartreuse. You've got a half meter of the, is this the light lilac? I can never remember the names of them, so it's a lilac dot. And then we've got this fantastic Henry glass. So let me show you what each one of these look like. I absolutely adore this. Um, what one is this one called? Uh, called Hydrangea Bird Song by Jane Shasky. Oh, but look at that. Isn't that just brilliant? I absolutely love this little piece of fabric. It is so good. I just love the way the little birds are sitting on the hydrangeas, next to its little boxes. It's got so much detail on it. It's great. We've got our lovely fan on as well, so you can have a little bit more movement on your fabric today. You can just see how beautiful that is. So you're getting a half meter of that. And what I love is around each one of the boxes, it looks like a little picture frame. You can see it looks like a little picture frame that is just so beautifully done. This really, really lovely design, this. So that's the main fabric you're getting with it. I don't know whether you can call it a main fabric or not, but it's just such a nice little vibrant pop of loveliness there. And then to match it all up, you've got this lovely purple dot. Really, really lovely dot, this. So this is the Rosen Hubble pop Cotton Poplin Spot. Look at that. But what works so well with that is, look how beautifully it coordinates with our Henry Glass. I don't know who puts all these bundles together, but they are very, very clever with it. Because even with the chartreuse on the dot, even without the Henry Glass, look how brilliant that goes. Really, really good. We haven't even started sewing How Are Their Threads. <laughs> So that's our lovely Hen um, Rosen Hubble uh, dot, purple dot. Oh, someone has been changing the way they're folding these. It's completely just to throw me off my game. I got so good at wrapping, uh, at folding fabrics. Now they're going, nope, you got too clever. You got too clever. What? No. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you clearly love our early bird. 10% of the stock has sold out already. I haven't even opened all the fabrics yet. But that's what you know. You've seen these gorgeous ones before and look how great. Now, this chartreuse is such a beautiful, beautiful color and it really coordinates. Now, I'm going to do my usual where I pop them down so you can see what you're doing because I do that in the fabric shop. I put all the fabrics on top of each other to see if they work and look how well that works. Sorry, I haven't positioned that very well. There we go. And you can just see how beautifully that chartreuse goes with all of these. It's a perfect, perfect match. Whoever did them, well done. You definitely get the John stamp there of getting your colours right. Re Do you think that's Hayley? I think it is Hayley. She's very clever like that. Very clever like that. So those are the three colours you're getting. You're getting a half metre. Oh, I haven't shown you how big a half metre is. Sorry. So you're getting three pieces this size. And you can see it's a really good piece of fabric, that. I feel like I should do a dance. And you're getting three of those for £11.47. Now, come on, that is such a great price. So, in, in sorry, my talkback's falling out my ears. Sorry about that. Technology going wrong. When has that ever happened? Yep, they've definitely folded these differently. <laughs> but I'm following the lines. So, if you haven't bought with us before, the early bird might be a really great way of doing that. The f way, best way to get in touch with us and to purchase from us today is www.sewingstreet.com. Failing that, if you don't want to use the website, call our call centre 0800 001 4433. Don't worry if you're going on the website, don't worry if you're going through to um, a website called Jewelry Maker. They are our sister channel. They are so lovely. They've managed to keep us in, keep us going and our, they've made, let us share their website until ours is finished and sorted, which is underway. But you can imagine building a website like this, it takes a lot of work and everybody is now working as hard as possible to get that sorted. But don't worry when you're on Jewelry Maker's page. But when you are, have a look around. They've got some amazing things on there. You do get kind of lost in all the bits and bobs on there. So that's a great way. If you want to stay in touch with us on social media, 
A couple of other ways of doing that. If you want to be on Instagram, you can get us at, at Instagram. Oh my goodness, I do that every time. On Instagram, our username is at Sewing Street. Sorry about that. Failing that, you can get us on Facebook. Our channel run page is Sewing Street TV. That's the best way of getting hold of us if you want to uh, touch base with us on Facebook. There's a little message bar so you can do that. Failing which, you can get us now on our own personal email address, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. That's just brand new this week, isn't it? And then lastly, but not leastly, if you want to then ever look up any of the shows we've ever done, we go back all the way to Valentine's Day, you can go onto YouTube and search Sewing Street and you'll see every single demonstration, every video, every product, all the way along right back to when we started. So I am really excited about these because all of us have a really lovely, lovely collection of fat quarters. And we've had this one on before. Oh my goodness. So we had this one on a couple of weeks ago. I had it on as an early bird. Um, I haven't even mentioned it and we already have got web sales of 30% of our stock on the blue one. So just to let you know, it's really popular already. What this is, is a, um, a fat quarter storage bag. So what you would do is you would buy a whole load of wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful fat quarters. And I'm just taking these arranged from our, se from our set over here. I don't remember the order. I do remember the order, sort of. But you can see that's five loads of fat quarters there. You've got, I think they're, tw they're five in each one. So you can see how many you can get into this bag hundreds of them in my opinion you know I like to crush things in to make sure I get them nice and set in there I'm sure I've got those red ones there the wrong way around but if you missed out on this the last time it's back again so the great thing is you've got that wonderful way of storing them inside you've got these velcro compartment makers so if you want to put these in you can but if you don't want to you can take those out and you can just store your fabrics in there as well. You know, if, if somebody was going to do a heist of the Sewing Street TV page, you could just then pop all your fabric in there. And what is so great about this bag, not only is it just a nice way of storing it, if you want to use the compartments, they're really easy to insert. You just press it again, it's just normal Velcro. You pop one on one side, one on the other. It should be simple, but of course, I can't get that one to stick because it's folded. <laughs> And then you can pop it in like that. But then you've got this wonderful little plasticky top at the front. And this is, um, you know those waterproof-ish, but not fully waterproof. It's got a plastic in between it. So it's gonna protect your fabric against dust and mites and things like that. And the sun and all the elements, etc. because you've got that plastic thing as well. It's just a really, really usable bag. And then, once you've got it done, you can then put all the fabrics in from the set and just run out the door and no one will notice. And it's a great thing for storage. And you can then pile these on top of each other. We've got a second one as well in green, but you can see, before I show you the green, you can see they stack on top of each other as well. And we've all got hundreds of fat quarters. So we're not quite sure what to do. And I started putting them in boxes because I've got too many for bags. Um, and I do them by colour. So you can have your blue colour, your black colour, your red colours and all your colours in different bags. And the great thing is having the windows, you'll be able to see through them. And with mine in boxes, I can't see past one layer. If you position these well, your fabric is completely, completely organised and sorted. So that's the blue one that was sold, what was it, 30% already? More than 30% has already gone already, and I hadn't even mentioned it. We've had this one on before and it's sold incredibly well. That was the blue one. But brand new today, we've got the green one. Now, unfortunately, we've all got our little gremlins on our website every now and then, and they love it when they come in on a Friday with me. So for this one, over there, you will see there is, look at me trying to get my preview screen and all that there. You've got RTZW47, Romeo Tango Zulu, <laughs> Romeo Tango Zulu W, uh, Whiskey 47. That is the code you're going to have to unfortunately type into the search bar. During COVID and all of this, unfortunately, everybody's on short staff. Websites do have issues. So thank you for bearing with us during these times and getting everything sorted. So this is the brand new product again today. 
almost identical to this one except for the colour. You've still got the ver um, you've still got the Velcro in. Did you say twenty percent? Oh my goodness, twenty percent of this is gone. So you found it already, clearly. So it is able to be found on the website. And you've got these wonderful little partitions again with the Velcro. And they are really solid. You can see I can bend them, but they're not going to break. Um, and then you can pop those in there. And exactly the same thing. You've got these huge amount of fat quarters that you can put in there. So this is a pack of five fat quarters, just to give you an example. That's five there. There's five there. 15. And I'm putting these in the order that I've got them in. 20. 25, but now my tildes, how many are in my tildes? I think there are 10 in there. So that's 35. And this is doing it backwards without even paying attention. There's 45 fat quarters in that little section there. And we all know you could pack that a lot better than I can. But you can see it's a huge, huge storage box. You can probably get about 130, 150 in there very comfortably. And you can just tell that it just, it just looks so much better. Imagine buying them and then putting them in your storage bag, in your um, storage area, and you've got it all there. So you know that if you've got all your Christmas fabrics, it's in one bag. It just makes your life a lot easier, I think, having great storage. Let me check I've got these in the right order. I probably haven't. Hopefully I've got those back the right way. Sorry if I didn't. So this is a really, really lovely bag as well. And such a nice colour of the green. I'm hearing now almost 40% of the green stock has gone already. I cannot believe this is doing so well. Actually, I can because it's such a lovely product. Really, really great. Ten ninety nine for those two. But now we have got... A little bit of a limited edition but it's, it's it's a complete first thing for us for one week and one week only this book it is the accessories one this is only available worldwide you can only get it through sewing street we have got the exclusive on this wonderful book you can get it a week earlier from everywhere, a week earlier with us than you can anywhere else. Susie John's new fantastic book called Fat Quarter Accessories. And I've not even had a chance to look at it, so let's have a look. And we've got Susie doing a demo out of this book for us in a few minutes. I can't wait, but let me show you the books first. This is the accessories one. This is exclusive to us for a week. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, that would be really cool because everybody, every one of us has got little bits of fat, little bits of fabric lying around. Oh, look at those bangles! Can you imagine? Actually, I wonder if we're going to get into trouble showing this with our sister channel, Jewelry Maker. Look at this! Oh wow! And it gives you all the tips and um, techniques of a blanket stitch, a satin stitch, chain stitch, back stitch, stem stitch. I don't even know how to do those, so I'll have to cover a little... <gasps> look at that! Oh, we like a bit of... Oh my goodness, look at that! Oh, that's so clever. It's like little pom-poms on the end of your scarf, made with little bits of fabric. Oh, that is clever. Oh, there's that scalloped collar again that we saw earlier on. That is really fun. Imagine being able, if you've made yourself a lovely dress or top or something, imagine being able to get bits of fabric that coordinate with your top and then make that little, it's almost like a, a giant statement necklace. It's brilliant. Oh, and I'm seeing templates, so I'm guessing. Oh, there we are. There are the templates in the back as well. Oh, those templates are really good. Oh, and I love it because they've got the templates that tells you what page they're at. That's very good as well. So that's... Oh, look at the pendants. Oh, I love a nice bit of embroidery on that. That is really clever. But that's taking sewing to a new level because look how you've attached the charms onto it as well. That's very thoughtful. Oh, look at that necklace. Wow. Gosh, and there you can see all the different fabrics you're using and you can see how they're not the same as the top, but they coordinate so beautifully. And all of these are made, are they fat quarters? Of 
course they are, all made from fat quarters. But this one I absolutely love because we've all got those little bits of fabric that we've got. And normally we've got a little scrap bag under here which we donate to our charity, um, charity partners. And you can see you've got these little bits of fabric that we can't really use for a sample. But looking at that, you could easily be able to take that and be able to do it. Definitely using up all your scraps on these. And don't forget, this is now exclusive to us for a whole week. All, but you can imagine if you get the book, you'll be able to have made a whole load of bits and bobs before anybody else gets it. Look at that hat. A cloche hat. Oh, look at that scrunchie. That's adorable. And I love that it's, oh, a fascinator. I've always wanted to wear fascinators. I'm not sure it'll take off if I do, but I've always wanted to. You always look at all these people being terribly glamorous with all their fascinators. Oh, a nice little medal. Actually, I think I need to make one of those for Sylvia because she is definitely the star employee in my company. That is beautiful. I like that. Oh, and a Valentine's brooch. That, again, they've very thoughtfully put some de um, decorations on it as well. So it's just sort of upcycling everything, this. Oh, I love the camo brooch. That's very cute. Oh, and look at the butterflies. Can you imagine now making something like this and sending it on to somebody? I think that would be absolutely fabulous. What a nice little gift to receive. Oh, look at the earrings. Wow, those are fun. You see, now, when I saw that, I thought immediately glue gun, but it's not. That's very clever. But definitely, when you're doing, if you do get this book, make sure you check out the Jewelry Maker website, because they've got, look at this bangle. Because I know Jewelry Maker have loads of wires and bits and bobs to help you make them, which is why they're called Jewelry Maker. Is that right? I am hearing something very interesting today. If you, you know, we've got our uh, three pound ninety five one day P and P. That applies if you buy things from Jewelry Maker as well. I never knew that. So you can mix and match. You can go and get all your little accessories like these wonderful bangles to be able to cover, be able to get all of those bits and bobs from the Jewelry Maker page, and then you're only paying the one P and P for the same company. Never knew that. We should be promoting that. Close your rotary cutter. Sorry. <laughs> Every time I see a book with a rotary cutter open. Oh, I love a good tassel. One of my friends has those with bells on and she puts it on her wallet. Then in case somebody st um, picks her wallet up, she hears it. Wow, I am so pleased to hear 30% of the stock of the book has gone already. Which is exclusive with us for a week. Oh my goodness, I love a luggage tag. That is really good. So when you can travel again, or even if you're just going to, if I'm just going to my studio, I can just go John's bag and have that along. That is lovely. And then again, we're back to all of those. What a lovely, lovely book. So we're going to see a demo from her. Do you want me to do the vintage book as well? So Susie's got another book out as well, which is available at the moment on other mediums. But we've got this one today as well. This one's called Fat Quarter Vintage. Uh, 25 projects to make from short lengths of fabric. I love, oh, I love that. Is that Liberty? I think that is, that's Strawberry Thief, I think. Oh, wow, look at that bag. Oh, look at the little bow ties, that's adorable. Oh, little baby. So again, you've got all your techniques on how to do things. Um, and your stem stitch and how to do one step binding. I, I won't read that. Sylvia does the binding. Ooh, 1930s. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, that's very clever. Loving the way that we've got the um, sort of old lace embroidered circle in the middle to be able to make that your centerpiece, your needle case. That is definitely some liberty there. I've definitely got that in my stash. Oh, I love these. Nice little pin cushion there. Oh, look at that tray cloth. That is beautiful. I wonder if Sylvia knows how to do bias binding. I, I think Sylvia might beat me with a book if I buy it for her and say, darling, teach yourself how to bias bind. I found a pattern I love. Oh my goodness, this is adorable. The height of decadence. A pajama bag. 
Oh, that is amazing. <gasps> but look at the detailing on this. That is exquisite. Oh, Susie, talk about an aspirational book. This is stunning. Oh my goodness, that's only in the 1930s and I'm so excited. Now we've moved to the 1940s. Got a lovely little flower brooch there. Oh, a sewing machine cover. I have a new sewing machine, so I should be making a nice new sewing machine for my cover. I think though for my 720, I'm gonna need a little bit more than a fat quarter. A coat hanger cover. That is sweet. Oh, a pig bag. If I had a garden, I'd buy pigs. Oh, a patchwork cat, uh, cot quilt. That is so, look how happy the little baby is. I wonder how long they took for that to happen. Oh, look at these, these are lovely. Oh, now we're in the 50s. And I love the way the fabric's changing as we go. There is loads in this book. Oh, a hot water, oh, look at that. That is lovely. Oh, baby bibs. I feel like I need a bib a lot of the time, especially when I'm eating pasta. Oh, this is a nice notebook cover. That, it really is pretty, that. That is lovely. Oh, but look at all the, oh, this is, must be a memo board. That's lovely. Now we're in the 70s. Oh, a little draft excluder is a dash hooked. I love it. That's very, do you really? Oh, okay. Sorry, you don't, the thing with this is you've got talk back in your ear here and the conversation's happening behind you and you like drop in and out going, really, do you want one of those? Okay. <laughs> so if ever I do that, it's because I'm replying to the people upstairs. Sorry about that. Oh, I love this. This is all the templates you've got here for the embroidered cushion and everything. What a beautiful set of books there. Susie, you're a clever girl. Now, Susie, that's the vintage book now. So that one is available as well. But now we have got a fantastic demonstration by Susie, all about the um, accessories book. So make sure if you have got this book in your in your basket at the moment, or the early bird or anything else in your basket, um, we're gonna have an, um, a demo now for about 15, 20 minutes. So if you haven't checked out yet, don't forget, until you've checked out that product's not yours just yet and things have been selling really well this morning. I don't want you to lose out on anything. And you've only got the one day PNP through Jewelry Maker and through ourselves. So if you buy from either channel, only the one day PNP. So do make sure you check your basket out because you can check out 10 times during the day. You only pay, them, only pay the same amount. So make sure you keep that in mind as we're watching the, uh, the video now. And Susie, thank you very much. See you now. Hello, my name's Susie Johns and I'd like to show you my latest book, which is called Fat Quarter Accessories. Um, it's published by GMC Publications and it's one in a series of books using fat quarters to make all sorts of um, exciting projects. Um, this one has 25 projects for accessories, such as things you can wear in your hair, um, jewellery, scarves, hats, all sorts of things. Um, but before I tell you more about it, I'll tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, the reason I got into publishing, um, was after art school I needed a job and I worked my way up um, through the ranks to become um, an editor of magazines and part works. I'd been to, I'd done an MA at um, the Slade School at University College London and before that a BA in Fine Art at Ravensbourne College and I came from an artistic background actually my mother and her sister, my auntie, both grandmothers, all did sewing, knitting, crochet, and they taught me. They were the ones who showed me what to do. Um, meanwhile, my father was an artist, and I think I got my inspiration from him too, which is why I studied art at, at college. Um, then leaving university, working for publishers, um, one of my jobs was to commission people to make things, to make things by sewing, knitting and all sorts of different um, crafts. And then I would make sure I would edit the instructions and make sure that whatever went into the magazine made sense. And so when I went freelance, it seemed a natural fit for me to make things for magazines and books. 
and to write the instructions and so that's how I got to be an author. Um, I've had quite a lot of books published, there's some of them on the shelves behind me. Um, uh, for GMC Publications, which is this publisher, I've done how to embroider, how to sew, how to machine sew, I've done um, baby booties and slippers, knitted finger puppets, knitted woodland creatures, knitted pets, and in the Fat Quarter series I've done bags and purses, um, toys, and vintage makes, and now the, the Fat Quarter accessories. Um, so I'm going to take you through the book and just explain what's inside it. And then I'm going to show you how to make step by step one of the projects from the book, which is this corsage, um, this fabric corsage, which doesn't even need a whole fat quarter. It just needs um, small scraps that you've probably got on your, in your sorry, probably got in your work basket left over from um, other projects that you, you've made. So let me show you the book. So here's the book, um, Fat Quarter Accessories, and it contains 25 quick and easy projects to make, all from fat quarters or fabric remnants. Everyone knows, I hope, that fat quarters are handy pre-cut pieces of fabric that are amazingly versatile. And this book, which is part of an exciting series, shows you how to turn these small pieces of fabric uh, into an array of pretty accessories that you could give to your family or friends or, or to keep for yourself. So um, at the beginning of the book, here are uh, the basics that you'll need, materials and equipment, um, fairly standard. Um, as well as sewing equipment, you can see that here you need some sort of jewellery equipment as well, little pliers to make the jewellery projects. There's uh, a section on techniques, um, things like making bias binding, basic stitches, both hand and machine stitches, which you can see illustrated here. You know, I hope we've been very useful in giving people this sort of basic um, information. And then the first chapter is neck wear. Um, here's a scarf, a patchwork scarf, in tasteful shades of blue. <laughs> um, so there's a picture of the finished scarf. And on the following page, step-by-step -step instructions, each step with a picture, so that it's very clear how to make every one of these projects step-by-step. -step. Here's a collar. These have been featured on the catwalk uh, in 2019-2020. And um, here's a pendant. You can show off your embroidery skills in the centre of this by embroidering some little flowers. Here's a multi-strand necklace. Um, you can make as many strands as you like. You know, all of these projects are quite adaptable. You can change them to suit yourself. This is fun. I, I, I enjoyed making these very much, these rolled beads. And you can make as many or as few as you like and string them into a long necklace or a short necklace, and they use very small scraps of fabric, very, very good for using up all your little bits and pieces. The next chapter is on headwear, and the first project is a sun hat. Um, surprisingly that you can make a sun hat out of fat quarters with quite a wide brim to keep the sun off. Um, I particularly like this project, I like making it, and it's lovely, a lovely thing to wear. On, on a sunny day and it folds up, it pops into your bag or pocket. Um, this head wrap, another nice one for combining two favourite fabrics, perhaps matching um, an outfit. And the construction is quite interesting. Um, you make two uh, strips and then cross them over and that um, creates a little twist at the front. And then at the back you have um, a strip an elasticated strip so that it fits really nicely. This cloche hat would be lovely for a wedding, especially a themed wedding, I think, you know, a 1920s style close fitting hat, surprisingly easy to make. Um, you could match the fabric to your outfit and add a little flower. Um, here's 
most people's favourite thing for tying up long hair, a scrunchie. And this is how to make um, a nice thick fabric scrunchie, but also a bow that you can tie on it to add a bit of detail. And um, back to weddings, lots of people these days much prefer wearing a fascinator to a wedding rather than a hat. And this one is uh, using fabric to cover a cinema base. You can buy those online, easy to get hold of. And that gives it the lovely shape. And then you can decorate it um, with feathers and a fabric flower, whichever, in whatever way you like. This chapter, brooches and corsages. The first, um, the first project in this chapter is a medal, a fabric medal. Do you know someone who deserves a medal? I expect you probably do. And this one's made from scraps from your workbox, and it's an easy project to honour someone special. And again, you can use any combination of fabrics, I'm sure. You can use your imagination and your creativity here. Here's another um, nice... Uh, <laughs> nice thing to make for um, a friend or family member. Um, make it from fabric, decorate it with little charms. This one's one of my favourite projects in the book, Cameo Brooch. And I've used pictures of my own family. That's my auntie, um, and that's my great-grandfather and my grandfather. So it's a lovely sort of sentimental project, if you like. And it's easy because you can print family photographs, photocopy them directly onto fabric. You can buy special fabric to do that with. This butterfly brooch is a great one for letting yourself loose with a bag of fabric scraps. Um, not only cotton fabrics, but bits of silk or velvet, whatever you happen to have. There's a bit of machine embroidery here, sort of freestyle machine embroidery to decorate the wings. Um, and, you know, yes, it's a lovely way of, you know, combining colours, combining textures. One of my favourites in the book. And now the flower corsage. I'm going to show you how to make this one step by step. We'll just pause for a minute and I will um, take you through the various stages to make this, this fabric flower. I decided to focus on this project because it requires no special equipment or materials. You don't even need whole fat quarters, just fabric scraps. And you don't have to use the sewing machine. All the sewing can be done by hand. For the main part, you will need three pairs of fabric circles. One 10 centimetres in diameter one nine centimetres and one eight centimetres. Place the two circles, the pair of circles, um, with the right sides together and sew all round by hand or by machine. And then you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. Um, I've used a six millimetre seam allowance and left a small gap for turning right sides out. So you turn them right sides out and give them a quick press with an iron, tucking in the raw edges on the opening, just tucking that into the, to the wrong side. At this stage, I suggest sewing a decorative running stitch around the edge of each of the circles. If you don't want to do this, you could just top stitch them um, using the sewing machine. You now stack the three circles on top of each other and draw a small circle in the middle. Just draw around a button if you like. And then sew around that circle with running stitch and pull it up just slightly, pull the stitches up just to gather the centre a little bit and give it a bit of shape. You then cut a strip measuring 54 centimetres long, that's the length of a fat quarter, by 3.5 centimetres wide. Um, fold it in half and sew a running stitch and gather it up into this little frill and then wrap that frill round 
in a spiral around the centre, just outside the line of, of running stitches, to create that sort of frilly effect. Now you need a strip. Three, sorry, <laughs> not three, four centimetres wide and 33 centimetres long. You fold the long edges to the centre and then fold the whole strip in half. Attach the end of the strip to the centre of the corsage, just with a few stitches, and then proceed to twist the strip. Um, twist it and coil it. I'll show you that now. Just, I'm just securing the end. Um, yes, twist it and then coil it around and this forms a lovely decorative um, centre to the corsage, like a sort of rosebud in the centre. And as you go, you just secure it with a few stitches with your needle and thread. I've got a couple of finished corsages here to show you the effect of this um, twisting and sort of wrapping the center. Um, and then I've sewn a few beads in the center just to finish it off. To make the leaves, there's a template at the back of the book. You simply cut two leaf shapes, put them wrong sides together, sorry, right sides together, <laughs> and sew around with a six millimeter seam allowance. Then turn them inside out. I use a plastic corner and edge shaper for this, but you could use a blunt instrument like a knitting needle. You can make as many leaves as, as you wish. There's four in the book, but I've just made two here. Um, for the stem, you need a strip of fabric that measures 20 centimetres long and three centimetres wide. Fold it in half with right sides together and sew a six millimetre seam. Then turn it right sides out to make um, a nice neat stem like this. Just tuck in the ends to neaten them because you'll be able to see both um, ends on the finished flower. You stitch the leaf to the back of the corsage and then fold the stem in half and stitch the fold on top of the leaves. Then take an ordinary safety pin and sew that in place. I'll show you how that looks now on the finished ones. Um, just try and be as neat as you can, especially if you're giving it away as a present. You can see, yes, there's four leaves on the on finished corsage in the book, but you could do two or three leaves or no leaves at all. It's up to you. And here are the instructions just to show you just how clear and straightforward it is to make. So, as you can see, I've taken off my scarf and put on the corsages, all four of them. Um, some people might choose just to wear one. I decided to go for a big display and put all four on at once. <laughs> so um, just to reiterate, uh, this book is now available. Fat Quarter Accessories, 25 projects to make from Fat Quarters and all sorts of accessories as I've shown you hats, scarves, things to wear in your hair, jewellery, bracelets, all sorts of things. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Isn't that fantastic? What a great demo. Thank you so much for that, Susie. But now, before I go back on the book, I have to give you an announcement. Sold out. Sold out. Completely sold out. None of this left. And there are only, only about a handful of the blue ones left. So if you are interested in these, please, please, please get in touch. Uh, make sure you get that. Um, you, and remember, if you haven't checked out your basket yet, unfortunately, it's not yours. So that is the thing. If you'd like to get in touch with us on social media platform, this is the best way of doing that. Um, if you get hold of us on our Facebook page, which will be www.facebook.com forward slash sewing street. Um, failing that, you can get hold of us on Instagram. Oh, so, sorry. 
and you can get hold of us on there and there'll be a little message button to be able to get us on message. Failing that, if you'd like to get hold of us on email, you can touch base with us at studio at Sewing Street. Dot com. So that'll be studio at sewingstreet.com. And those are all uh, monitored during the show. So if you have any messages for us or you want to just say hello, we'd love to hear from you. Here we go. Slight technical issue there as well. Sorry. Bear with. Bear with. Can't possibly happen when I'm on air every time. Sorry. So the accessories book, this has been doing really, really well. I think you said that was at 50%, was it? 50% of the stock has gone already on this. I'm not surprised. Such a lovely book there. Fat Quarters Accessories book by Susie Johns. This is available to us exclusively for a whole week. You can't get them anywhere else, only with us for a week. And by the time it's released to the rest of the public, you'd have already made a whole load of beautiful accessories. And make sure you check out our jewellery page, uh, jewellery maker page as well. Then last but not least, we've also got our Fat Quarter Vintage book as well. So also that's also selling really, really well at the moment as well. So if you are interested in that, that's $12.99 with us today. Now, my favourite part of working here is new fabric, new fabric. Now, I'm sure I've got these in the wrong order. The which one? Brown and natural. Brown and natural, I got the right one. So this one is, I'm gonna take it out just to show you the colors, I'll move that there. Oh, these are really lovely. So you can feel it's a, what is the weight on this? This is 55% hessian, 45% cotton for three pieces and then one piece is polyester. So this is the um, hessian and cotton blend. It's a lovely feel to it, nice and soft. And just look at that beautiful design of the lovely little hearts there. And then there's another one with the hessian and the cotton. That's available there as well. Beautiful little feel to that as well. Lovely little dot. I'm thinking this one's the polyester one, but what a lovely gingham there. Really, really nice that. And also then we've got this lovely hessian cotton blend there with a the brown dot on it. What a lovely, lovely combination of fabrics. Each of these fat quarters is 54 by 45 um, centimeters. So what's that in imperial money? Probably about 20 by 19, round about that. But you've got four of these here, four of these for $12.99. Such a great price. And I love the fact that they're not cotton because you can do different projects with them. All the different um, homeware projects, really, really lovely that. So that's the, that's the natural and br uh, brown and natural. How much did you say? Three twenty-four. So these are £3.24 each. Such a great price on that. Now we've got the red and natural, but I love this because we've got some real raw hessian on the end of that, which I love. So these ones are also 54 by 45. They're of um, these, this one here is again 45% uh, cotton and 55% hessian. Sorry, I should have got that out beforehand. So this is a beautiful little snowflake there with the red. That is really, really lovely. Very Christmassy. And you can you believe it? We're, we're just over six months till Christmas. Santa's coming. <laughs> then we've got our polyester gingham there again. So that was our polyester one. Um, and then we've got another beautiful 45% um, and 55%, 45% cotton, 55% hessian. And that really does have such a lovely feel to it there with a lovely um, red heart dot. And then we've got this one is the 100% jute. And it is it's just that proper jute feel to it as well. So if you're making something for outdoors as well, this would be perfect as the backing. Um, and then having these beautiful fabrics at the front, it would be lovely. And it's also got, these are very durable and they last for years. So you'd be easily be able to make something, if you were doing it for Christmas, this would easily make um, a good use for Christmas and last for ages. Even making gift bags and things like that, really, really good. Even Christmas tree decorations. I've seen some really interesting uses with jute. It's a lovely product. Not one that I use a lot, but it's really lovely. So that is a wonderful combination there. Four fat quarters, brand new to us today for $12.99. That is a really, really lovely one. Now we've got this wonderful printed naturals range. Again, 54 by 45 centimeters. We've got, um, oh, this is neutral. Is that the right one? Printed naturals, so there we go. So this one's again, 45% cotton, 55% hessian. Beautiful little dot on that as well. Oh, that's lovely. That one is, oh, 100% cotton. 
that's got a lovely, lovely feel to it. It's a bit like um, muslin or the Osnaberg that we had the other day. That is lovely, really good feel to that. And I think you're getting two pieces of that. <gasps> this one's a little bit lighter with a bit more of a soft feel to it as well. Really lovely, that one. And then we've got these wonderful hessians. Oh, look at the one. I'm going to take this one out if you don't mind. So this one, look at that. Now, unfortunately, our gremlins have returned. So as you can see over there, you've got the code there of YVZW63. I'm really sorry, you're gonna have to just type that into your product code search bar. Just the website's having a bit of a moment, so please bear with us. Uh, look at that wonderful, wonderful printing on this. It's a really lovely, lovely design, that one. Nice little French bit of words on those, I love that. And you're getting five in this one. You've also got this one, which, I, oh my goodness, this feels stunning. But look at this. I know someone who's going to love this one. That'll be our Alison Mar um, Marion, because she loves all of her featherweight sewing machines. And it looks like there's a little featherweight in the middle of that. I love this. So that, those are your five fat quarters you're going to get. I'm not even going to attempt to fold that now. I'm going to just do that and go, there we go. You've got five fat quarters for you there. Um, so that's a really lovely bundle there. That's available for you for $14.99. Unfortunately, that's not available on the website at the moment, just by looking. You are going to have to type that code in, which is YVZW63. And now we've got our red fat quarter bundle. Again, these are 45% cotton and... 55% uh, cotton, 45% polyester. This is in red, 54 by, 50, 54 by 45 centimeters each. But look at this, and this is such an interesting design on this. Look at that. Wow, that is lovely. These ones are much easier to fold because they've got much more defined lines. There we go. And then we've got a lovely little polka dot on that. Lovely little polka dot. Oh, look at that stripe. That's lovely. Oh I, love, oh, I love these two as well. Look at that. They're a really lovely combination, these. So you've got five different ones there, but look how beautiful they are. These ones have got, um, I, I hate to use the word, but you know those really amazing dishcloths that you get? This is the feel of that fabric. It's beautiful, really, really lovely. And I have to say, I would actually just put an edging on these and make these into dishcloths. They are gorgeous. So there we go, we've got five fat quarters there again. This is for $14.99 there. Really lovely colorway there, and brand new to us today. Then we have, this one is called the natural. This is your natural to fat quarter. Now, these are, what? That can't be right. Quickly, buy it before Hayley Tain changes it. It's a four, nine, four fat quarters for $8.99. That is a really good deal there. You've got your lovely piece of jute here, which is great. Let me open that up to show you how big that is. This is 54 centimeters by 45. Look at that, so that's a really nice big size on that. It's a nice size for a good cushion, and it's got that lovely jute smell to it as well. Really, really lovely. So you've got that one, and then you've got this wonderful combination here. These are lovely. These sort of natural, are these hessian? Yep. Oh, these are linen, two linens. Oh, that is lovely, they feel lovely. So you've got a meat, uh, one fat quarter of your jute, two of your linens, and then you've got this lovely piece of um, cotton as well. 100% cotton piece here as well. Really, really lovely little combination there. And such a fantastic price, $8.99 for those four. That is a really, really good deal. These are brand new to Sewing Street today. Unfortunately, bec and probably because this one's such a great deal, we're going to have to make you do your search on your code again. So just where my finger is pointing there, you've got the code there, which is YJZW47. If you search that on the website, this will pop up. And it's such a great deal. I'm hoping not all of you find it, because I want to get one of those. That's really good. Then lastly, we've got our lovely combination of purple floral. Oh, wow. Sorry, you know I get very distracted very easily. Look at that. This is a lovely, lovely fabric, that. This is lovely. Oh, my goodness, these prices can't be right. 
So this is seven ninety nine for four fat quarters. That's one ninety nine a fat quarter. That's a, well, it's seven ninety nine for almost a meter of fabric there. That is such a great deal. And look at the fabrics you're getting. They're really good. Of course, yours will be folded a lot better than I've just done there. And then look at this one as well. This beautiful little ditzy one. Oh my goodness, that is stunning! This is stunning. Oh, I'm liking this bundle a lot. Look at that. You can just see how beautiful they are. And they just go so to get go together so beautifully. This one I would have mistaken for a liberty. It's beautiful. Oh, See, I'm looking across the stage at the moment and our 10 o'clock show is something quite special. So if you have got nothing planned for the rest of the day, 10 o'clock, you want to be here because we've got some amazing fabrics and this is going to make a little reappearance later because this goes really well with that bundle over there. <laughs> so <laughs> really, really, really lovely little bundle that. $7.99 for these four fat quarters. These fat quarters measure 45 by 54 centimetres and they are 100 grams per metre squared. And they are just lovely, really lovely design on that. So again, unfortunately, do you have to search the code for this one? That one is available on the website, so the gremlins seem to be behaving at the moment. Now we have our wonderful combination of tartan. There are four different tartans here. Really, really lovely, and the feel on them is so, so lovely. This one is definitely the softest of them, but these all feel really, really good, and you can see all the different tartans you've got there. I know these two look the same, but they're not, because they've got a yellow line there and a yellow line there, but this one does only have one yellow line going across, and I know that's really important for tartan clans. I'll just shift that around and you can see. But they are really, really good. What? $6.99. I'm sure some gremlins have gotten to these prices this morning. That is a great deal there. £1.74 per fat quarter there. All of these are 54 centimetres by 45. Such a lovely, lovely, lovely quality on these. And they are fabulous. I love these. Really, really great. And they feel so lovely as well. What are we doing next? How's our early bird doing? We're going to go through our wonderful design panels here. We're going to start at the very top. This one is called... This is Copen Summer Fat Quarter Plus Set 1. And look at this. So our fat quarters are larger than other people's fat quarters. This is 19 and a half inches by 27 and a half inches. That's 70 centimeters by 50. This is the wonderful set of designs on our first bundle here. And that's available for $14.99. Really, really great price. A really lovely big piece of fabric there. But you can see all the colorways are so good and they're so vibrant. Look at those. Really, really great. And then if I fold this over, you'll be able to see all of them together there. Really, really good. Loving that. $14.99 for those four fat quarters there. Now we're going to look at the Cope and Summer pa Panel 2. This is also a lovely, lovely combination here. Again, the fat quarters are 27 and a half by 19 and a half inches. Really lovely colorway there all together. And I'll show you again on the overhead so you can see what they're looking like. Hopefully I positioned them correctly and you can see all four. There you go. You can see those beautifully there. Really, really lovely those. Then we have the Paisley Marmalade panel number one. Is this number one? Yes, it is. It's almost as if somebody set the set up perfectly for me. There we go. That's our Paisley Marmalade set one. Again, 19 and a half inches by 27. And you can just see how interesting all of these designs are. Really, really clever, wonderful use of Paisleys here. And we can get a bit of a closer look to them here. Apparently my positioning on this is getting better and better. I have to say, I do think this is one of my favorites that we've designed. They're absolutely gorgeous. And all of these designs I'm showing you are 100% exclusive to Sewing Street. 
can't get them anywhere else. And we've got a lot of exclusives today. We've got that fabulous book by Susie Johns. Don't forget to check that out. And everything that's in your basket at the moment, remember it's not yours until you've paid for it. And somebody unfortunately can come along and take it out of your basket. We don't want that. Now, it's effectively stealing, isn't it? But until you paid for it, unfortunately, it's not yours. And you can do multiple checkouts through the day. This is your Paisley Marmalade Fat Quarter Set 2. Again, each of our Fat Quarters are 19 and a half by 27 and a half inches. And you can see all the wonderful designs we've got here. These are very autumnal and they've just got that wonderful traditional, but it's not traditional, but it's really very, very contemporary, but using the traditional um, paisley. But you can see that these are traditional paisleys, but as you zoom in on them, they actually look like little fish because it looks like it's got a little spine and everything on it as well. It's great. And here we've got our, um, what we call this one? The Harbour. This is the Fat Quarter Bundle Set 1 for our Harbour. Again, 19 and a half by 27 and a half inches for each of these. Very, very vibrant colours and the detailing on these shells is incredible. It's a really beautifully designed piece, this. I'm thinking then for a beach bag or for different things, if you've got one of those um, summer houses at the beach that you can take and you want to have your little accessories on there, it's great. Again, $14.99. These are exclusive to Sewing Street. Oh, gosh, we've got so many lovely designs here. And then last but not least, we've got our um, Harbour Fat Quarter Set 2. Again, 19 and a half by 27 and a half inches. A really lovely combination of these. I absolutely love these shells. They've got a beautiful, and that teal, light teal at the bottom there is absolutely stunning. I'll give you a closer look at these designs as well. You're getting so much fabric with this. So what's, it's a really nice way of being able to use these fabrics and give it a try. But you can see the detailing on all these shells is incredible. And that teal, the line on there is really, really great there. I absolutely love these. But if you look at the orange here, the detailing, it's not a flat orange. It's got that wonderful sort of cross, uh, crossroad on it. It's got a textured thing on the very, very cleverly designed. <coughs> so there we go. We've got some wonderful fabrics for you today. I just want to recap on this because we haven't got a huge amount of these left. We are... We have less than 10 of this wonderful fat quarter bag left. So it's back in stock today for the first time and we've almost sold out of this one. We've already sold out completely of the green, which is brand new to us today. We have less than 10 of these now. So I just want to remind you, if you have got one of these in your basket, please make sure you check out because if you haven't checked out and paid for it, unfortunately it's not yours yet. After the break, block of the week. I'm very excited. We've got a lovely, lovely block for you today. And I know most of you have been a bit terrified because it's a bit of a scary block. So back with you in a few minutes. We're just going to redo the set. And don't worry, it's a lot easier than you think it is. I really promise you that. See you in a few seconds. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, Drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. of the week i'm so excited i'm so 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 excited so the block that we're doing today is this one it is our block nine and it is a little bit terrifying looking at it like that it looks a little bit terrifying i'm not going to take it away i promise it looks a bit scary but i promise you it is nowhere near as bad as you think it is so this is the block we're going to be making we have got three different colorways on it we've got our blues colorway over here we've got our brights colorway here um, and we've got a vintage colorway. I'll show you. Most of you know what the vintage colorway looks like because it's been our most popular colorway. Look at how beautiful this is. So each week you are going to get a panel like that with all four of your colors on. And when you're doing your pattern, you will see that on each of these fabrics, I'm going to put them like this. And if I fold this correctly, Hopefully I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm showing, what I mean. Right. So each week you're going to get a different amount of fabric of each of the fabrics that we have. So you'll be able to see that when we get them, each one of them will be labelled. So it doesn't matter if you're getting the blue, the vintage or the brights, it doesn't matter. There's fabric one, there's fabric two, there's fabric three, and down the bottom here is fabric four. Now, why is that important, I hear you say? So, what I'm gonna do there is you'll see there's fabric one. That's our cutting plan on fabric one. That's our cutting plan on fabric two. 
three, four, and what that means is when I tell you to cut out fabric three, my fabric three on the vintage way is green, but on my brights and blues colorway, it'll be totally different. So don't worry about it. As long as you learn your fabrics one, two, and three, one, two, three, and four, you should be absolutely fine. Now my top tip for each and every single week is cut off that little section where it says fabric three or one, two, and four and attach it to your pattern because it's gonna make your life a lot easier knowing that is what fabric one, two, three, and four mean because some, most of us are gonna do the project then and there, wonderful, done, sorted, quilt in a week, sorted. However, a lot of us don't have time to do it, so we'll cut it all out and two or three weeks, ten weeks, four years later, go back and go, what is he talking about? What's fabric for? And you've already cut fabric one, two, three and four off your, off your panel. So please attach them to your pat patterns. It makes your life a lot easier. So that is our um, vintage colorway. The brights colorway is this, so you'll see so I think the Brights is one of the best. I absolutely love this. And it's definitely Liam's favorite, our, our producer. And you can see, look how beautiful that is and very, very vibrant. But equally, we've got our lovely blues colorway here as well. And you can see that's the star there. But I see I'm loving a blue, but I won't deny the more I've done this, because most of my demos have been with the Brights. I've really enjoyed them. But my favorite, the, the favorite one with all of you is the vintage. So there we go, what do I know? Now each week when you buy this, you're gonna get the wonderful set of instructions. You get the front and the back. Most weeks it's one page, next week it's not. It's quite a few pages. And then you're going to have your panel that goes with it as well. So each week you're getting that, that's $11.99. Um, so not only are you getting the pattern and, the, pan and the, the panel of fabric, you've also got a demonstration by me each week and that will then be pulled out every single time to be able to show you exactly what you're doing each week. Where my um, ups and downs, Sorry, um, the, it gives you all my tips and things and where things go wrong and it will be a separate hour on the YouTube channel as well. So that's a great resource for you to have as well because a lot of the time when you do a block of the month, you don't get a tutorial and when you do get a tutorial, it's normally live um, and in person. Unfortunately, we can't do that either at the minute, but it just means then that you, if you forget what it was, at least with having this, it's available. It's a pulled out separate section on the YouTube channel and you'll easily be able to go and find that. And then don't forget as well, we've got our blue colorway that's on the screen at the moment, so you're getting the wonderful panel as well as the pattern again. And that's all ready to go. So we're already on block nine. Um, if you haven't started already, please don't worry. We have been very clever. And you can buy all of them individually, or you can go and buy our, one, our block one to nine of all the panels in all the different colorways. You can buy them individually as a single block, uh, and then you're only paying the one postage as well. It's a really, really great way of being able to catch up if you haven't been involved so far and you want to now get involved. There's a wonderful, so we can see now, I love this. So this is our vintage colorway. So you can see all the blocks that we've done. Uh, you can see block number one, seven, five across the top line. Then we've got four, three, and next one is number 12. That's coming in the last week. Then you've got two, number nine, which is today, and six. Uh, and then you've got eight, and then that's going to be number 11, I think, that bottom, middle one. And then number 10 is the one after that. So it's a really lovely little combination there. That's for our vintage colorway for the pack of nine. Um, and then we've got that, are we doing that for the brights and the blues as well? Yay! So we've got that in our blues colorway as well. Look at that as well. So that shows you also all nine blocks that we've done so far. So the kit that you'll be getting in this combination there for £107.91, it'll be everything that's got a number on. You'll be getting the panel for each of those as well as the instructions. That's numbers 175 in the first row, 43. And then the third row will be two, nine, and six. Number nine is the one I'm doing today. Um, and then number eight. 
And you can put them how you like because you can see the way, that's the way I've suggested that people lay it out. If you don't like that to lay out, that's fine. You can move it around. It's your quilt. And I've had a lot of messages saying, what do I do if my block's not exactly 15 inches? I'm a bit worried this one's 15 and a half inches. Don't worry. I've got a few little techniques on how you hide that all away and how you can save it all. Don't worry. And the thing is as well, I don't want people trimming or unpicking or doing it. Just, it's done. It doesn't matter. We will make it work and I'll show you how in our last Last week that's week 12 uh, Nick, uh, in week 12 we're gonna have a two-hour special because that'll then be an additional thing you're doing which is the borders and the backing uh, the borders and the um, sashings and the sashing stones as well but don't forget those are, that's the first two we've also got our brights colorway that is numbers one seven and five in our colorway there and you can see we've then got four and three in our second row and then numbers two, nine, and six in our third row. And then the last row, we've got number eight. So those are the ones there. I have to say my favorite block of all of that might actually be the one we're doing today because, but now what I want to ask is, and what I've loved is that I've, I love the fact that there's so much social media involvement in on this. And I love the fact that people are talking to each other when they post a block. You did not like block seven. <laughs> you really didn't like block seven. But what I love is you've all stuck with it and you've done it and you've done it again. And if it's wrong, you've unpicked it and you've matched those points. Think back to number week one, where we just did a log cabin. Look at how your skills have improved. Look how much you've improved along the way. And this week, I'm taking off those trainee reels. There's no trimming down of your um, squares this week. You're gonna make it work and you're gonna do it right because you now all know what a scant quarter inch is. You know exactly what you're doing with a half square triangle. You know how to get it right and you're gonna be absolutely fine. And I am so proud of all of you with what you're doing. And, it's you've done really really well on these and I have to say all the pictures online you really are inspiring me to keep going and I'm so so proud of all of you if you're just missing one or two blocks along the way every single block all the way from number one to number nine in all three colorways is all available on our website so you can go and check those out and have a look look for those you don't have to worry about them you've all got them you can easily go and get them if you've missed one out so that's all available for you so do go and check that out now, each of you know every week when I make these, um, I lay this out as I go along. And the reason I lay these out as I go along, something's missing, that's right, because that's the side, is when I know that they're there and I know that they're right, I like to make sure that I've cut everything correctly and they're all ready to go. And this is a really easy way of being able to make sure that everything that you're doing and everything that you've done is working. You've got it in the right place um, and that you've cut out enough pieces. And this way, if you cut something bigger or smaller, you'll easily be able to tell that it's bigger or smaller because it's not going to fit. And the great thing with that is you can then fix it before you actually go down the route of actually sewing everything together. Um, I've got to just, here we go. That one's there. And that one's there. And we've got that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Now I know you're looking at that and going, huh? So that is meant to be that. So you've always got your picture to do it. It's really, really great. And remember, my fabrics one, two, three, and four on the picture are different to your fabrics one, two, three, and four per design that you've taken. That's absolutely normal, and we've done it that way on it for a reason to make sure that you can do it as safely and as comfortably as you can. Uh, every time I do this, every time I do a block of the week, I forget to plug my iron in or disconnect my iron. So give me 30 seconds. I'm going to grab that and grab my gorgeous June Taylor pressing board. There's my June Taylor pressing board. I'm gonna have that ready to go. Now, all of the instructions on how to do this are available in your pattern. It's really, really easy to do. So one or two of the things that I want to just keep you aware of is a lot of you have had problems with doing your um, half square triangles. So as we all know, you're gonna line your half square triangle up. You're gonna line everything up perfectly and you can see that I've lined that up perfectly on the bottom 
and on the side, they're exactly the same size. Remember what a quarter inch seam is and what a scant quarter inch seam is. If you have missed the tutorials on how we've done that, don't worry, they're all available. Weeks six, seven, and eight, I've discussed it at length. So go back and watch those. If you're still a bit unsure, you'll easily be able to see that. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a scant quarter inch of about two threads, just to make sure that when I fold my triangle over, it's not gonna to be too big and it's not gonna to be too small. And I'm now, I'm jumping around with my steps, but it's exactly the same thing all the way along. It's the same step all the way along. I think I'm doing step two at the moment because I'm using what I've called my, oh! Come on, my friend. Oh, we've all had this, haven't we? She's on a Friday holiday. She doesn't wanna be doing this this morning. Come on, darling. She wants to be on holiday. And I was gonna use my 720 because I've already bought one and now she probably feels affronted that I wasn't going to use her all along. I'm so sorry, she was having a nice little nap and then I go and disturb that. And there we go, my bobbins, ah, that's what it is. My bobbins come undone in the wrong way, it's gone. So, oh, that's where it is, I found the issue. Whenever you do your bobbins, if you then wind your bobbin, you've got a long edgy bit over here hanging out like I did there. Your machine does not like it because it sucks up that little bit and then it goes, nope, not going anywhere there. Nice little top tip that I've learned over the years of screaming and shouting at inanimate objects for things they have not done wrong. Now, every single week that you get your panel, you are going to see you are left with loads left over. And what I loved, what I absolutely love, I can't remember how I pronounced Tina's surname, but Tina has gone and actually made a miniature version of this quilt and using her scrap fabric, scrap, spare, left over, not finished, used with fabric. And I love that, and you've inspired something. So I have actually gone, and we're gonna be talk talking about that, because what I'm loving is, if everybody can do me a little favor on social media, will you tell me how much fabric you've got left over at the end? Because I'm trying to think of a little project, because all of you are wanting to do more bits with your fabric, and make more bits with this whole project. So let me know roughly how much fabric you've got. If you put it on your mat, you'll be able to see roughly whether you've got a fat quarter or a half a meter of all the fabric that you've got left having made the blocks. Let me know how much you've got as fabric because then that lets me know how big and how small I can make the extra projects that I want to make for you. So drop me that on a Facebook. That would be a really lovely thing to do. Please tag me in that. I'd love to see how much you've got. Now, as you know, I try and press my block, my seams open. If you've never pressed your seams open before, this is a nice way of being able to give it a go. Um, and try it. Um, if you normally press your seams open and you haven't pressed your seams to the dark side, this is a nice way of being able to press your seams to the dark side because you can then try it and see what works well for you. Because certainly when I'm sewing um, strip sets together, I do find putting it to the dark side does work a lot better because you can nest your seams a lot better as well. Whereas pressing them open, you don't get quite as good a, a match of nestling but I find with doing triangles and things like that, I do prefer having my seams pressed open. So it's just one of those nice ways of being able to do your skills improvement and also just find out what works best for you. And again, I always set my seams first because we use polyester, so that just gives the thread a bit of a zap up. And then I press that open. I don't know what's happened to my little prim iron. You know how I love my little prim iron. This one's here today. It's gone for a little walkabout, I think. It's all right. We don't mind if people go for a little walkabout. They always come back. Or it's probably sitting right under the table here and I've just not seen it for looking. I'm quite famous for doing that in the studio. I'll be like holding the June Taylor in my hand and saying, where's the June Taylor gone? I can't find it. So, what I've done now, this is exactly per the pattern, I've now sewn all my half square triangles together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna sew these two together to be able to make a mini flying geese. Now I know a lot of you have asked, why are you just not doing these as flying geese? 
You're quite right, you can easily do them. But what I wanted to make sure that I had was everybody perfecting the flying geese situation because I think that's one of the few things that a lot of people don't actually focus on to get right. So what I'm going to do here is now you can trim your edges off. You don't, you can, I'm just on telly, so I'm trying to do this as quick as I can. So what you're trying to do is you're lining your squares, your half square triangles up completely. You're then going to line these two lines up Hold those nice and firm, and I'm going to start sewing from this end towards this end, from here to here, along that line. And you're quite right, doing this as a flying goose would have worked, or flying geese would have worked better, but I wanted everybody to tr practice their, flying, their half square triangles, because it's one of those techniques that not everybody is able to perfect, and doing it uh, repetitively all through this project, how much better are your, flying, uh, your half square triangles now than they were? It just makes it, it's a skill builder and what this whole process was to improve your skills to make sure that you were feeling much more comfortable about your um, half square triangles than you were before we started the process. But certainly from what I've seen online, your skills have improved tenfold. I had a lady go on there saying that her first block was so bad and she just feels so proud of herself because she's done so much better on the seventh block than she did on the first. And the seventh block was, was, was not easy. It was not an easy block. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sewing these squares, these two pink squares, onto here. Now I am jumping around a little bit on the pattern. Um, and that's absolutely fine. You'll see when you get to that point. Now, if, you, if your square doesn't fit exactly into that triangle, you've done something wrong. So if your square, you can see here, my pink square is completely the size of my half square triangle. If it doesn't, have a check on the back. There are two reasons it's happened. Either your seam allowance is out, um, and or you, the, when you cut your square, your square is either too big or too small from what it should be, or your triangles are too big or too small from what they should be. So don't worry about it. If it's a little bit bigger, no one's ever given a quilt back for a point not matching. It's about the love and the care. If you are interested in just seeing why it's happened, take your ruler out, have a little bit of a measure, see what's gone wrong. Is it the fact that you didn't use a, a scant quarter inch or was your scant quarter inch too scant or too big? Um, that is the, one of the two reasons that it would happen. And don't worry, just next time when you do it, make sure you use the correct scant quarter inch and it doesn't matter. As I said, no one's ever given, I've never heard of anybody giving a quilt back for not having a perfect point. And if they do, they're not taking it in the love and joy and care that you made it for them. And they don't deserve that quilt. You can send it to me because I'd love it. Don't send me your quilts, please. <laughs> I have about four million quilts at home and my husband keeps looking at me going, you do realize we have a heating system? I'm like, yes, darling, yes, darling. So there we go, you can see I'm pressing my seams open again. And there we go. So what you'll find in the pattern is, I don't know what step I'm about to do, let's have a look. So what I've done is I've done steps, um, three, four, and five, and now I'm going to do step eight. Am I doing step eight? Yes, I'm doing step eight, because I'm just jumping around. So previously what I've done is that you first, once you've got your blocks and you've sewn these together, you will pretend that's not here. You're gonna sew those onto the sides like that. You're gonna make two of these, put them to one side, you're going to make two of these and you're going to sew them on. And then step eight is you're going to sew both of these onto the sides over here. Now, when this is now where you've got to pay attention. You do, these are the points. If you're wanting to match your points, here's where you just have to pay a bit of attention. You can see here, I have not matched the point. Oh well, no one died, it's fine. Their point is perfection. You will not get a better point. Everything lines up. So for me, 50% is brilliant. That is 10 times better than I thought it would be. I thought the whole thing would just collapse under me. That one, it lines up perfectly there with my green line. My pink line is good. That one's out. Oh well. See, you've just got to have that. Oh well, doesn't matter. Because I've had this in my bag getting in today, this has gone over there.
So there we go, I'm just pressing those open again. So when you want to line these points up, the points that you're looking to match are these. So your block is going to go together like this. So the first point you want to line up is this seam over here needs to run in symmetry together. Okay, then equally, these two over here need to run together. But if that's not difficult enough, you've got to take that little point there and that little point there to match up. So it is one of those ones where you just look and say, John, are you actually having a laugh? Are you actually having a laugh? Don't worry. Now, if you miss a point, if you miss a point, remember, everything is on the bias on these triangles. So if you're going to miss a point and you do miss a point by accident, do not unpick the whole seam. If you miss this point, unpick from there to about there, finagle your fabric to the right point and then sew again. Do not unpick the whole thing because you're going to distort the whole fabric and then everything goes wonky. If you are going to unpick anything, and I please, I beg you, just accept that you didn't get the point. It's okay. If you hit the point, woohoo! If you don't, oh well, no one's going to be upset about it. It's just a learning curve. That's not a, you're just going to make, try and do the learning curve on that. Now, I've hidden my pins under here. I know, I know, I got asked beforehand, have you got everything that you need? And I'm like, I'm sure I do. I don't. It's always the way. So in order to try and maximize your ability to match this point, you're going to take a pin. So when I'm sewing this over here, you can see where my, and this is another way where having your seams pressed open makes your life a little easier. So where the cream on here and the green meet the pink, that is the actual exact folding point that we're wanting it to be. So if I'm sewing, I do not want to be sewing here because I will miss the point drastically. And I equally don't want to be sewing over there because you're going to have that massive lump of cream. So ideally, you're wanting your needle to go one hair that side. So when you fold it over, it's folded over at the exact point you want it to be. So I'm going to look very closely at it and I'm going to push that through there and you can see that is the point I want my needle to go through. Okay, so over here, now first of all, check you've got it the right way, I do. Over here, exactly the same thing, I'm wanting my needle to go through at that point there, rather than over here. Oh, there we go. So there, I don't want my point going through there, and I don't want my point going through halfway down there, I'm wanting it to go exactly through there so you can see that I've now got that point so if you've got your needle in there I've let my pin in there so you can see I've now left my pin completely alone I haven't done anything with it all I'm doing is I'm lining up this edge here okay lining that edge up here and now when I do that can you see that my pin is all wobbly so now I turn the fabric so that the pin is in a straight line and then I hold this bit over here so that when I move my pin, the fabric's not moving. So I hold that nice and tight, and then I use my fingers and I feel for where the seams are lined up. I go back, and this is where literally it takes a bit of finagling and a little bit of manipulation. So what I'm trying to do is I'm holding the fabric with my thumb, index finger and my thumb nice and taut, and then I push that needle down through the seam. So you can see I'm on this side of the seam there and I'm on that side of the seam there. That doesn't matter provided you're in exactly the same place on both sides. If on this seam I was on the pink and on this seam I was on the grey, do it again because what's happened is you've just moved this piece over a little bit which means that this seam that we're trying to line up here will end up looking like mine did there when ideally you're wanting it to look exactly like that. So you can see what I mean. That is the perfect, perfect seam there. Oh well. We're very close and I'm not worried. So I normally don't use pins at all, which please, if you feel comfortable using pins, use your pins. If you don't want to use your pins, no one's going to be cross with you. Do what feels comfortable for you. So now again, this is where your quarter inch comes in really, really handy. And now I am 90% sure I'm going to miss both points and it's going to be horrible. So we're going to go with that, that it's going to be horrible. And I'll be enthusiastically surprised if it's not.
So my needle is now at the point of about four stitches away from hitting the point that I wanted my pin to be in. So I've taken my pin out. Oh, that looks beautiful from this side. Probably ruined it from the other side, but anyway. No one can say I didn't try. Right. Now I'm not using a pin on this side and my thread hit my seam twisted a little bit there. Okay, is that right? Perfect, hopefully. Cross your fingers. Oh, we've had a message in from Christine. Morning, Christine. Christine saying she's new to quilting and she was getting all stressed out about seams not matching but she loves watching today and now it doesn't really matter. We're going to go with three out of four ain't bad. I'm sorry, I'm incredibly surprised by that. But that is what you're looking for. That is the exact thing that you're looking for. I've actually just got my arms in the air like I just don't care. That, and I literally am like this because I think every time you get your points right, you have to do this. You need to celebrate it. And if you don't, have a cookie. Just have a cookie and feel better. But that is exactly what you're looking for. You're wanting, and that is the perfect example. You've got this seam lined up. You've got that seam lined up. You've just got your squares kissing perfectly there. It is exactly what you're looking for. That is perfect. Absolutely over the moon, thrilled. Uh, just don't even look at it because it's perfect. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Frame it now as it is. That's perfect. <laughs> ever again. So now again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my seam. And again, I'm pressing my seams open on this project now. So I just push this open. And there we go. You can see, oh, I've pulled, folded that one in. That'll happen a lot. Don't worry. So there we go. That is what it's going to look like from the front. And I've got three perfect points, which is a lot more than I was expecting. So I'm going to take that and be very happy with that. So my next step is, I'm just going to double check with the pattern what number it is. I told you I was jumping around. We're now going to do number nine. So you'll see I've made three of these. So this is step 10. Making this is step 10. So I've already made three of those because it is quite a complicated block and I wasn't going to have time to do all of it. So actually, I'm now going to do one of these for you and I'm just checking I've got it the right way around. So the step nine, I think it's step nine. Yes, step nine is sewing these two together. So just like these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these right on top of each other. Check that they measure the same and this one doesn't. And the reason being is I've used two different sewing machines to do this. So at this point, you're going to get the rotating cutting mat that you've hidden so carefully from yourself. Oh, there it is. I've got it ready for my next demo. That's what it was. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim this down to the correct size. Oh, it's almost there. I do that every time. I get the rotating cutting mat out and I don't use the rotating cutting. I just turn it. Okay, so that's the one. I think this is the one that was slightly too big and it is not by a lot. And you can see this is how much wastage you've got on it. That's when you know you're doing it perfectly correctly is when you've only got that little bit of wastage. That means your quarter inch seam is perfect. That is exactly, if anything, you are half a thread using your half a thread too narrow 
on your seam, so don't worry about that. But that is what you're looking for there. So now I'm going to sew these. Oh, this one's the one that I was trying to trim after all that. This one is slightly bigger. Oh, it's slightly smaller. Right, so that then just shows you that's a really good trip because this is going to happen to you as well. And as you know, I am not one for re um, for unpicking, especially when you've got bias involved because it will cause a problem. And you have got extra fabric, so you can re-sew this without a problem. But I'm going to show you a nice simple trick for doing this. So this one is slightly too small. Okay, and when I say slightly too small, it is one I'm just getting these the right way around. It is one hair too small on this. So what I do is I lay the, the piece I'm sewing it to down and I can see that the, the thread is over here. But what I do is I put them down on top of each other and I make that difference in the center. So what I mean is let's say this was, was I don't have a smaller block. So let's say that this middle one was much, much smaller what I would do is I would split the difference. I would have some of the difference being there and some of the difference being here. I wouldn't have it just in one corner because then you're easing that difference out and you won't be able to see it as easily as if you just put it in one corner. So you split the difference if your block is slightly smaller um, and by slightly I mean one, two threads. If it's more than that, just Cut yourself two new triangles and do it again. You have enough fabric, that's why we've given you so much more fabric. Just make sure, just, you've got loads there, so we want to make sure that you're getting it done as quickly as you can and accurately as you can. Um, so this is the perfect example here. You can see I'm one thread, I'm two threads too big over here. You can barely see it, but you can see I'm two threads out there. So what I do is I move it over that I'm one thread out there and I'm one thread over there. So that is where, so that's how I'm going to sew it there. So I'm one thread over here and I'm one thread over here. And that way then the difference is so, so tiny, you lose it that way and you're not gonna be, it won't be visible as if you just put it in one corner. And there we go. So keep referring to the diagram because I have sewn this multiple times and multiple times I've gotten it wrong. So that is totally normal. Don't worry. And I think that's what I love about this is that it is made by quilters, for quilters. So all the little areas that I've come across, I'm going to let you know. And of course, as I just finished that bit, my bobbin ran out. So you're going to have to forgive me multitasking over here while I trim that down. Um, oh, no. Every time I have to unthread a machine, I hear Jenny Raymond screaming in my voice saying, do not pull the thread from the top. Whoa. And we have a little bag of threads. <laughs> I love this. I love this because not everybody gets to see the behind the scenes. We've got everything in there apart from white and gray. This is the last gray in the bundle because it's the most, oh gosh, I'm putting the bobbin on the end there to hold the thing on. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna wind my bobbin. Very professional, this. But you all do it, you've all done this before. Normally not on national television with time crunches to make this work. Oh, come on. Does anybody else have that problem where you get that wind on and it doesn't go? Oh, come on. Be nice to me today, there we go. So it's having a moment. I think she wants a little bit of helping hand on this. Oh, come on, my darling. Anyone else talk to their sewing machine when it's having a moment? I'm pretty sure not everybody's being as kind to their sewing machines when they're having a moment than I am trying to be with this one. Right, that's more than enough for our little piece there. Thank you for bearing with me during that. 
we do fill them up for everybody and then what happens is that we forget to look at them sometimes and then go on air and we're like oops but we've all had that so the great thing is is that you know that this is real you know i'm not making this up because i normally because i mess up so much but there we go right so now i'm back to this point now and you're going to make four of these as per your step 10 i think it is just double check yes this is your step 10 you're going to make four of these so two of the four that you're going to have made are going to be sewn onto your uh, your step eight block which we've already made and then two of them are going to have squares put onto either side so i'm going to be really i'm going to try very hard to do this at the same time there is no right way of doing it just do what works best for you follow the pattern if you want to whatever works so now you can tell i've got four of these oh helps i put them the right way around i've got four of those and then two of them are going to have the white squares sewn onto the sides and those two are going to get sewn onto there now when you're sewing these on here remember you're trying to get that point there you're trying to get those two points there and you're trying to get that point there on top of trying to keep your lines there and your lines there and your line there so i'm going to do that now and i'm going to do it freehand and i'm not going to use a pin you pin if you want to i'm going to give it a go and see how i go i'll probably miss it entirely but that's why you're a better sewer than i am you can say i'm so much better than that john off the telly isn't it and i don't mind it's long oh you know what you can't be this grumpy with me all the time come on my darling i've given you a new bobbin and everything have i unthreaded you boom, boom, boom. getting a little bit of scrap i can't believe i'm using the tilda apple butter as scrap it's possibly the nicest fabric we have there we go right so i am now popping taking a deep breath because she was going to be gorgeous now, there you go thank you darling thank you darling anybody else stroke their little machines when they're behaving nicely okay so that one worked now this is the key one the center one over here and you just do the best you can Perfect. And then this one's a little bit easier because you're just matching one triangle up. Again, I'm hoping for two. I will take two being perfect. Oh, I got three. I'm going to take that. I think that's quite all right. Quite happy with that so that's the one side now i'm going to do exactly the same over here now again i'm matching that gray dot up there i'm lining those two up perfectly there and that there as well as and you can see i've kept my lines absolutely perfect there you're trying to do that again if you can and again if you don't it doesn't matter no one's going to be upset with you I think normally we're more upset with ourselves than other people being upset with us. So there we go. Now, thank you, my darling. I got one. So this one, hopefully. Two out of three ain't bad. 
<laughs> so you can see that one's perfect, that one's perfect, and this one's a hair out. So this is going to be your step number 11. So we're now going to put these together. And again, I'm going to set my seams first, and then I'm going to press those open. So you can see the training wheels have come off. This is a little bit more complicated. You've got a few more little things to focus on to line up. But look how long you, how far you've come. Look how much you've done already. And if you've forgotten, go and look on Facebook where you posted all your pictures of these as you went along. And the great thing as well, if you've missed anything about maybe my machine breaking down and you just want to giggle or just me being excited about missing one or getting one point rather than four of them, you can go back and watch every single one of the shows for the block of the week. They're pulled out as separate hours um, and you'll easily be able to uh, go back and check and see where you are for each one of those. Even if you just want to go back and watch it and just to watch it. I had a lovely compliment from somebody the other day saying that they thought my voice was very soothing and they could sew better with me in the background. My husband laughed for hours. He thought you were very, very funny. <laughs> my husband has not had a meal cooked for him for a week. And there we go. To be fair, I can't say that. He does all the cooking. I've not been in the kitchen for years. It's wonderful. So there we go. And don't forget these June Taylor um, pressing mats. They're absolutely brilliant. So there we go. We've done that. Now, the last bit of the step is I'm going to show you just going to sew these um, squares onto either edge here. Um, now, over here, remember I said to you when something's a little bit larger, you can see over here that's a very good way of showing you my triangle is two threads too big compared to the square. They're meant to be identical sizes. So I'm going to put my square in the middle of that overage. Um, can you... So if I put that over there, actually, you can see... So you can see I'm a thread over there and I'm a thread over here. So instead of putting my triangle over there and being out on that edge, or putting it over there and being out on that edge. I'm splitting the difference. So I'm allowing there to be a slightly larger seam on this side and on that side, but I'm keeping my quarter inch in line there. All right. So that's just what I meant to you earlier, that if you are slightly bigger, split the difference and put it in the middle. And that way then all of your sides would then, if, in theory, everything should be equal at the end of the day. And then again, you're going to do pressure. I'm going to set my seams. And then I press these open. And again, if you haven't pressed open before, try it. See what you think. If you haven't pressed to the dark side or to one side, try it for one of these blocks. See what you think. See what works best for you. I just love being able to say I pressed the dark side. And then we go. So I'm only going to be able to sew one of these on today for you, only because I'm going to let you do the other because it's exactly the same. So just like I lined these up here, I'm going to make sure that these lines line up. And then that triangle point meets and that triangle point meets. Now, as I'm doing this, I can see one of my seams or two of my seams is not going to line up. OK, can you if I do that? You can see that one's perfect, that one's perfect, that one's perfect, that one's almost perfect, and that one's perfect. So I now know that one of these, if not two of these, lining up processes is not going to work. That's okay. So I'm going to select that these middle two aren't going to line up, and I'm going to, I think it's more important that you have this one line up and, the, and that one. If you have to lose two, do, and we're talking at one thread. We're not talking as if it was like half a meter away. So if you're going to have to be out, do those. Rather get the centers lined up. And again, you're doing exactly the same as you did before, trying to line those triangles up absolutely perfectly to hit that point. 
and pin all the way along if you want to. Do it freestyle like I am. Whatever works for you, just do what works for you. But also, I've heard a very good tip from a quilters all over the years, and these were from quilt judges, that they always ignore the bottom left-hand corner, because normally your eye doesn't go to the bottom left-hand corner of anything. So if you have got a quilt block that's a little bit um, freestyle, shall we say, then stick it in the bottom left-hand corner and hope nobody looks there. I just can't believe we're on week nine. It's only three more blocks to go. This week has flown by. Not been without its entertainment. And I'm very sorry I wasn't here on Wednesday. My lovely brand new car has a nice big expensive bill to be repaired now. So all I'm doing now is I'm pressing this open. I'm not even going to look because I'm sure it's terrible. It's not too bad, actually. And even if it is, I don't care. It's finished. So there we go. I do find the more layers you've got here, pressing open does get a little bit more difficult, but it's better to press them open at this point because if and when you do get it quilted, if you have got a giant lump there, whether you're sending it to a long arm or doing it yourself, as your needle hits that giant lump, you're going to end up with a problem with the quilting and you'll have a couple of stitches missed. So it's best to try and get this lined up perfectly now and pressing it open. Well, that's not too bad. And now that it's all on together, I give that a nice little zap. Yep, I'm going to take that. These two, three of those are perfect. One's almost perfect and one's one stitch out. I am very happy with that. And then you're going to sew the rest of the block on exactly the same as you did the top. You're going to sew that down on the bottom. And I will say that if your fabric is misbehaving, I don't steam it until it's all sewn together and then just give it a nice good blast of steam and your block's nice and flat and that's there. It's a beautiful, beautiful block and I know that it's one of those patterns that you're going to use for years to come. Um, and unfortunately I've got it on the metric side so I can't measure if my block's the same. But there we go. So all you're going to do is repeat exactly the same process over there, line that up perfectly. And that's block nine. So if you want your vintage colorway, um, I've just realized I've got the vintage quilt here. So let me show you what the finished vintage quilt looks like. It's been freshly ironed. So this is the vintage colorway, which has definitely been the most popular. I'm just checking which way around I've got the quilt. Now what I'm loving is the fact that I know two or three people have actually bought two or three different colorways of this and they're actually mixing and matching the blocks. So perhaps one week you want to put a blue block in and you can have it as a totally mixed quilt. And the great thing is, is as you saw in the pictures earlier, they all come out the different sizes. So this quilt is actually going to be 66 inches by 82 and a half when it's finished. So this is such a lovely way of doing it. And I love the fact all the team here are actually taking part in doing this. So I'm going to put that one here just so you can see the vintage way. Because it's been the most popular all the way along. And I'm going to learn from my mistakes and I'm going to disconnect my iron now. Because everybody forgets. And there we go. So that's the vintage colorway. We've also got our gorgeous blues colorway here as well. It's this block here that we've just made this week. Um, and we've now made nine blocks in our quilts. Do you mind taking that graphic out? There you go. So this is the quilt block we've just made there. Really, really lovely block there. And then the brights one is definitely Liam's favorites here. And I, I think it's really vibrant and very punchy. That's the block we've just made now. But I do think that the great thing with these colorways, the blues and the brights, you could very easily mix and match those, which would be a really great way of doing it. Maybe doing six in one color, six in another. But please, on Facebook, message, please pop a post on saying how much fabric you've got left 
um, and what block you're up to. So just that way then I can get some, there are plans afoot. So we can see where you are. But it's a really, really lovely quilt. And the great thing is the social side of things, everybody's being able to get involved. None of us can go anywhere or do anything at the moment. Um, so it's a nice way of being able to do something together and get involved and stay in touch with each other as well. And if you haven't started yet, we've got those wonderful bundles, which are from block one to block nine in three different colorways. Um, we've got these wonderful pictures that we've got of showing you all the different blocks on those as well. We had those earlier on in the show. And having said that, I can hear that Kat's frantically trying to find them for us. Bear with, bear with. I say that a lot, sorry. I'm stealing Miranda's thing. So this is the vintage colorway. That quilt is 66 inches by 82 and a half when it's finished. Um, that one is going to be getting blocks one to nine. So you'll see the first row at the top is one, seven and five. The second row down, you've got four and three. The last block in row two is going to be block 12. So that hasn't happened yet. Then you, in the third row, you've got two, nine and six. And then the very last row, you've got block eight, and then it's blocks 10 and 11. I just can't remember which way round I've done them. Um, I think we've got 10 is the middle one and 11 is the end one, I can't remember. So that's the vintage colorway. We've also got our blue colorway as well. This is also very popular. We've again, you've got the same blocks on that, exactly the same blocks each week. Um, that is definitely the wrong graphic, because that is, uh, there we go, that's it. So that's, oh no, that's the vintage one. I tell you, these gremlins are all over the set today. There we go. So that's blocks one to nine in the blue welcome quilt kit, fabric panels one to nine and instructions one to nine, £107.91. And you've got all nine blocks there labelled in there. And then lastly, we've got the brights colourway as well. And we think it's just nice that if you haven't joined in and you like the look of the quilt, it's a good size. Um, you can then join in with that as well. There are 12 blocks in the series. So there's the Brights colourway there. Blocks one, seven, five on the top row. Next one is four and three, and I think it's 12 on the second row. The third row is now finished as well. Two, nine, and six. And then block eight, and then you've got 12... Uh, 10 and 11 on that row as well. So it's a really, really lovely quilt. Nice way of being able to be involved. All the videos and tutorials that I've done since block one are all on YouTube. If you haven't been onto our YouTube page, just go onto YouTube, type in Sewing Street, it'll pop up. Make sure you subscribe and you get notified of new videos coming up every day. Um, and then you'll be able to see every single tutorial for the way. So after the break, we have got some Dresden plate rulers, we've got some isosceles triangle rulers, we've got our crazy scrapwork rulers, and we've got Tilda! I was able to cut up the Tilda Fat 8s. So I'm very excited because that fabric is so beautiful. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. Where have I hidden it? Where have I hidden it? Where have I hidden it? Look at this! Just look how beautiful that looks. And these are from Fat 8s. Most of us don't use Fat 8s, but you'll be astonished how much you get out of a block of Fat 8s. So join us after the break for that. We're just going to redo the set. See you in a few minutes. Hello there, I'm Debbie, and this is my brand new Sewing Room Secrets quilting book, which is available exclusively signed on Sewing Street right now. So if you haven't seen any of the shows or caught up on YouTube, let me give you a quick flick through, because in here I'm going to teach beginner sewers or beginner quilters all about quilting, different types of quilting, different techniques for quilting and for binding your quilts as well. But not necessarily quilts that go on a bed. They're a quilted uh, Christmas stocking tutorial, there's a quilted placemat tutorial, a quilted storage hanger tutorial. So very simple achievable products uh, for the beginner quilter to learn how to sew. So you can't buy this anywhere else at the moment. You certainly can't buy it anywhere else even on pre-order with a signed copy but you can get hold of them right now on Sewing Street while we have the stock. You can order on the website, you can order on the, on the phone lines. I do hope you enjoy it. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. 
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Welcome back. I was just trying to do something quickly there and I could hear them count to go five, four, th three, three, two, two. <laughs> so sorry about that. I'm trying to get the demo ready for the next thing because I saw something incredible online this morning and I thought, oh, I must try that because we have got, where are we? Where are we? I'm famous for doing this. Right. We have got creative grids. I love creative grids. But we've also got Tula, um, the t not Tula, Tilda, Bon Voyage collection. The fabric is so sublime. So any of you who have seen any of my demos with Creative Grids before, you may have seen me doing the demonstration for the Dresden plate. But what we've never done with the Dresden plate is have 20 different fabrics in one Dresden plate. So when I saw that, so this is the ruler you're going to get, and you're also going to get this wonderful circular ruler, which I'll show you how you use those. You're getting this wonderful set of instructions as well. So don't lose the instructions because the instructions are fantastic in being able to show you exactly how to cut them, how you're going to be able to do them, all the different patterns, everything you need to do on those. Really, really, really important. But what I love about these is we, so we had a really good tip in from somebody is that what she does with these is she laminates them and she laminates them a bit bigger and then she puts them in a folder. And it works really, really well because that way by laminating them you can flip it round, you've got both sides. Really, really great tip with this. But don't, don't lose them because if you do, you don't, um, you're going to lose those. But if you do lose them, don't worry. There are so many different videos online. If you are able to scan that QR code, you'll be able to see all the different um, suggestions and tips that you're going to get. But that is the ruler as you will get it when it comes to you. So let me show you how this works. There are many ways that you can do this. So I, beforehand, before this, I made a few of these Dresden plates. Now, these are my fabrics. This isn't available on the show, but look how effective that looks with those beautiful stars. And those, you then applique that onto any background fabric. You could put a black fabric with it. And just imagine how interesting that would look if you used a gold thread attaching this down with a satin stitch or a blanket stitch. That would look absolutely incredible. Um, and then I did it as well with some Liberty. So you can do it really nice and small. So you can see just the difference in sizes. That was doing the fan method which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, I also did one just cutting the blades out, no fan, no fuss, just a round circle. So that worked very very well as well. But I also did one which has got these beautiful curves on them as well. So I'm going to be able to show you all of those using our fabulous Tilda Bon Voyage fabric. 
So I'm going to show you the fabric first, the Fat 8. So this is the bundle you're going to get. Um, I'm going to take one of these Fat 8s out to show you just how much fabric you're getting on each one. But I'll remind you of this at the end of the show because I have used these Fat 8s to make these Dresdens and the Six Degree Isosceles Triangles and I've cut out loads and this is how much fabric you're getting on each one. There are 20 of these, so you're getting a small piece of every single piece of fabric that they have in the collection. And the whole bundle is £49.99. But there is honestly so much fabric in this, you won't actually believe how much you get out of it. So these are coming out £2.50 each for Tilda. It's such a great price there. And what I'll do is I'll show you the remnants that I've got. So these are available as well by the Fat Quarters. So it gets a little bit confusing in a little while, but I'm gonna make it as easy as I can for you. Let me first show you what I've cut out. So first of all, I've cut out a big Dresden from each one. I've cut out a flat Dresden of each one, a slightly smaller one. I've cut out a fanned Dresden of each one, but equally, if that's not enough, I've also cut out, but this is what happens when you get a ruler and you want to play with it, I have also cut out two, four, so I have cut out five and a half inch isosceles triangles, I've cut out two of those, in, I've cut out two of them all in the five inch sizes, and these ones I managed to get three out because I was just able to manipulate the fabric getting it that way. But I've also got these smaller pieces as well. But if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough, I've still got this much left. So most people don't use fat eights because they aren't aware of just firstly how much fabric you're getting, but also you're not really aware of that you're getting each and every single fabric in the bundle. Now, I'm going to try and do this in the exact order of the fat quarters as well. So when I show you these fabrics, all 20 of them are available in the fat eights, but we've also got fat quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you each one of these as a, each five of these colorways. Hopefully I get this right, what could possibly go wrong. Um, so that's that one, that's that one. And I'm just looking for that last little one over there, which is here. So those are the four colorways, that you, the five colorways that you're getting in these five fat quarter bundles. So these are full fat quarters, and these are the different colors that you're going to get with them, the different fabrics in them. The colors are slightly different on the screen that you're going to be able to see, so I'll show you this this way. So that's the colorway that you're getting there. So that's the second colorway. This is the first colorway that you're getting there. And you can see it's a beautiful, beautiful print. That's the third colorway there. And this one's called the Small Blues Fat Quarter Bundle. So all of these are the traditional fat quarter size. And it's just got five of these colors in there. But don't forget on the Fat Eights, you're getting all of these different fabrics that I'm going to show you. So that's the first bundle that you're going to get, which is the Small Blues small blue bundle there. So that's available for $22.99 and that is a fat quarter of each one. Um, and then I'm going to do the small reds. Yep, small reds. So let me now get these all in order. Of course, if I'd been a professional and organized these beforehand, this would have made your life a lot easier. Sorry about that. Uh, but, um, but, but you see what it was is I've been cutting them out as I go. Oh, there they are. That's that one, that one, that one. Oh, there they are, right. So that's my second one. That's my first, that's my second. That's my third, that's my fourth, and that's my fifth. So I'll show you these colorways again. This is in the small red dot collection, red, small red fat quarter bundle collection. So you're going to get a fat quarter of each one of these. So that's the first colorway that you're going to get in the fat quarter bundle. And then this is the second colorway. And then you've got a third colorway here. 
and then you've got the fourth, and then you've got the fifth. And all of those are available in our small red collection there. But what I love about this is, is when you get the, and all of these five are available in the Fat Eighth collection as well. But what I love about these fabrics is they blend so well with solids. So the great thing is, is you'll notice just over here, as if by magic, we have a beautiful collection of solids as well. So I'm just showing you the Tilda's collection first. This one is the Fat Quarter Blue collection. So in theory, I think I've got these right. Nope, that's red, not blue. Just got to double check where I am. Oh, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. That's the last one. There we go. Just making sure I get these in the right order for you. So this is now the blue colorway, and let me show you what each one of these look like. So remember, I'm showing you all the colors in the collection here. So you're getting these in the blue collection. This is the large blue. But you can see that's more of a lilac in there, but it is so beautiful. And look at the selvages. They've got those really interesting little colors of blobs colors there. They look like flowers. They're really sweet. I love a good selvage. So that's the first colorway. That's the second colorway. I have to say that the fabrics, I won't, I, we shouldn't have favorites in collection, but I do think that the blue and reds large collection are absolutely stunning and they really work completely well with these Dresdens. You can see there's one there as well. And then this colorway as well, absolutely gorgeous. So all five of those available in the fat eights, but also these are the bundle that you're getting there for the blue five piece fat quarter collection available there for the Bon Voyage. So that's three of the four fat quarter bundles that we've got today. And then last but not least, we've got the next five, the last five in the fat eights, but also then available in the fat quarters. So those are the five fat quarters you're gonna get. This is the first colorway. Look how beautiful they are. They're really, really, really beautiful. Very, very special. This is the second. Just such beautiful dealing. These are beautiful little bunny rabbits and um, birds and flowers, and they're just gorgeous. That's the third. That's the gorgeous fourth one. And last but certainly not least, that's the thing. So each one of those, now remember on each of the fat eights that I've already used, this is how much I've got left. So there's easily more, in, more here to do for your... Um, 60 degree triangles, whether you just want to have a play, that's all you've got left on that as well. And don't forget then that comes as a wonderful fat eighth bundle there, which is a really great deal there. And it's a nice way to be able to play with the fabrics and try each and every one as you go. So let me show you now the Dresden ruler. The first one I'm going to start with is our curve. So you can see I've chosen to do these as a really nice, long, long piece here. So the nice, and of course I've forgotten to plug my iron in, again. There we go, whoever unplugs it, you know, honestly. And I've got my June Taylor here as well, because you do need, it does make your life a little easier giving these a little press as you go along. So what you're doing first is you're going to take your blades and you're gonna fold these in half. Okay, so you're gonna fold that in half like that. Now you can finger press it, you can iron it, you can do it however you like. I'm going to give those a little bit of a finger press just because the iron's not quite ready yet. Now in your Creative Grids bundle here, you're going to get, no I'm going to press these because that's moved a little bit. There we go. So now I've pressed that nice and firm. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take your little piece of fabric and you're going to put that down. And I'm going to do this twice, so if you missed the first one, don't worry, there are two demos. So you can see over here, you've got a white crisscross 
sorry, you've got a black crisscross line over here in the middle of your circle. So you can rotate this however you like, as long as you've got those crisscrosses over here. And what you're doing is you're lining this line up with your fold line. So you can see I'm just that side of the fold line now. So I pull that down so it's perfectly in line with the, the fold line. And then I move this ruler up as close to the edge as I can in order to make sure I've got the largest blade I can possibly get. Then I'm going to use a 22 millimeter, 28 millimeter rotary cutter. Now the reason these come in so much better than these larger ones is as you're cutting with these, your blade is so large that you might not actually get round the corner. And actually, I forgot, we had these 18 mil blades as well. They were on a little while ago as well. So I've not used that for this, so I'm gonna give it a go. Make sure you search this online. This is an Ulfa 18 millimeter rotary cutter. Oh no, it's not, oh, it is liking that. Look at that. Gosh, that's gorgeous. That's a beautiful cut. So this is a good one. Sorry, I hadn't even thought about putting that on there, but this is a really, this is the reason they made these rulers, uh, these rotary cutters, is because they work so beautiful then. So unfortunately, you're going to have to search for the code for this. So the code is just over there, which is USZW18. And I promise you will not regret getting this. Really, really, really great rotary cutter this. And this is exactly what it's designed for because it is going around this bend so accurately and so perfectly, it's brilliant. So there we go, we've now cut our curved blades. There you go, job done. That's all you need to do on those. And all I've done is I've now, I've sewn together these in groups of two. So you can see I've got two there. Um, I've got two here. And it, for these, what I did do is I laid these out and I did have them in the same order because I'll show you in a moment. So forgive me while I position this in the correct way. So I know which way I'm sewing these together. So I know that those two are sewn next to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these two together. So what you're doing, when you're sewing them together, now because you've got this wonderful central bit here that's gonna be covered by a circle, I'm going to line up and make sure that this matches perfectly there. And if I'm slightly out at the bottom, it doesn't matter because you're gonna hide that with a circle later. But what is really important is if you get that quarter inch perfect and you're matching everything up at the top. So when you're trying to then attach this to your background fabric, everything at the top lines up perfectly, that's what we're wanting. And in the middle, it's a bit covered anyway by having a central section. So it doesn't really matter if your middles are out. What's important is that your top bits are lined up perfectly. So what I'm doing now is I've now sewn four. Now, I didn't show you how you get two. So that was a bit, I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit. So I just need to find myself on my color grid. So that one to that one. So these are two that I've just pressed and cut. So again, I'm gonna line this top bit up perfectly. And I'm gonna sew down this line, making sure that those are perfectly lined up. Another good way of doing it is because I've pressed these together, these seams over here, we've got those little nodges, those should line up perfectly as well as that bit on the edge there. That's what you're looking to do, is to make sure you've got that all lined up perfectly. Okay, so what the best way of doing this is you have groups of two, and then you make groups of two become groups of four, and because there are 20 blades in total, you're gonna have two lots of eight, and then you're gonna have one lot of four, because obviously eight and eight is 16, and then you're gonna make a four, which is gonna sew into the middle. So what I've done already, in the piece that I've already half finished, I've got a, an eight and I've got a four, leaving me with another eight over here. So because I've already made one, and I've made a four already, this is my four that I've just made in front of you, and I'm now following this around. So that one is there, that one is there, that one is there, that one is there. I know that that one's next, that one's next, 
that one's next and that one's next. So exactly the same, I've now got two, so two are gonna become four. Again, I line my central bits up, I line, line my edge bits up there perfectly, get that ready, and off I go straight down this line. So now I've got two sets of four. So as you're doing this throughout your process, you can do these completely randomly. I was a little OCD and wanted all the fabrics to go out in a row. So now you'll have two lots of four. You're now gonna put, because you're gonna have, you'll have five lots of four in total. So two lots you're gonna sew together to become eight. But you'll then have a spare fourth one at the end. That's completely okay. And all I've done is I had an eight and then I sewed a four onto it. So that's where you end up. You've got three of your fours on there to make 12 spines. And then I'm taking the remaining two and making those an eight. And all you're doing, as long as you line the central line up at the very top and you're lining the tops up perfectly, it's absolutely fine because the centers get hidden by a circle in the middle. So it doesn't matter if your centers are slightly out. What matters is everything is lined up perfectly at the top. So then you can see that lines up perfectly. Just double check I've counted correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So now I'm going, now when I come to do this, it doesn't matter whether you sew this side first or that side first, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with the left hand side first. Now it's exactly the same thing we've just done. I'm lining that central line up. I'm lining that central line up that I pressed and I'm lining this line up here. So that goes there, central line goes there. But it's just such a nice design being able to do those little curves on them to get such an interesting design on it, it's fabulous. And this is a great thing with the Dresdens, is that they have been so thoughtful in how you do it. Um, and you can see that just flows so perfectly. And now all I'm doing is the very last line. I'm sewing those together. I would say to you, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, count out the number of blades. Just make sure you count the blades out because I have sewn this together before with 22 and I couldn't figure out why there was a ripple. And then I've sewn it as 19 in or 18 in and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't work. So it is important just to count your blades. You should have 20 in total because this is an 18 degree ruler. And there we go. That's our giant chest, Dresden. And then at the point you've now sewn all of those together, you're gonna get your mat, your cutting board, however you want to do it. And you can see that is huge. That is a really, really big block. Sorry, I moved that when you were doing the cameras then. That's a really, really nice big block that, but it is so beautiful. Now the way I do these is I press all in one direction. You'll see on the back here, I press them all in one direction. So what I do is I, I get my iron there and I just keep pushing it down all the way along. Now, the way I would do this is exactly as you said there, Kat, is now when I'm finished this, you've got many ways that you can do this. You can either just stick a big piece of bonder web on it and then bonder web it to a piece of fabric, boom, boom, bash, done, sorted. That's absolutely fine. But I would say before you actually quilt it, I would actually satin stitch all the way around or um, blanket stitch or just do some form of stitching all the way around to keep it nice and flat and keep it secure because I have actually quilted a quilt recently just using the bonder web or heat and bond, I can't remember which one it was. Um, and unfortunately, once I've even quilted it, I've used it a couple of times, the bonder web's given way, so I'm having to repress it down. So I would make, oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. But you see what's so great with these, the Tilda fabrics are so special. They are really, really good. But now I'm always looking to see how can I extend my Tula, my, my, my Tilda, because my Tilda is so beautiful and I want to make sure that it, it spreads out as much as possible. So what you can do, I'll come back to that now. So I'm, I'm gonna jump, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I always do this and they drive them mad. Look at these bundles and imagine that you had all of these blades 
as solids. You could put a solid blade there and a solid blade there. And what you did is, because there are 20 blades, maybe you decide you want to put five solids of one colour, five solids of another. So you put half and half, half solids, half tilde. That just means you'll be, I'll bring all the solids to you in a few minutes. It just means that you'll be able to do twice as many of these by adding the solids with it. But I wanted to make sure that I brought you a giant tilde piece like that, because look how beautiful that is. It is so, so gorgeous. And what I'm intending to do with this is I've got the plain blade, I've got the, uh, the curved blade, and I'm now making the fanned blade as well. How long have I got on this demo? Perfect. So what I've done now is the fans, boom, 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 I've lost one of my fans. So what you're going to do with the, to make the fans, oh no, I haven't, there it is. What you do is exactly the same as we just did to cut it. You're going to fold the fabric in half, exactly like we did before, put your press line, okay? And then you're gonna do a stitch line down there of half of a quarter of an inch. Oh, and I just broke my thread, of course I did. Sorry, Jenny Raymond, don't judge me for pulling that the wrong way around. Bum, ba, dum, bum. Right, and then you're going to do that on both of the pieces that you've just done, because I've got two to do. So all you're doing is you're just taking that and sewing a quarter inch seam down your edge, so you can see, I'll, I've, luckily I've got contrasting thread here. So all I've done is I've sewn a quarter inch seam down there, just sewn a quarter inch seam down there. Now what you're doing is you would take a pair of scissors or you would take a rotary cutter and you're going to just trim off a little bit of fabric. Do not cut through the seam line. You're just cutting a little bit off the fabric there. And the reason being is you're then going to take your wonderful little stiletto, my favorite little tool on the set here, and you just poke that through. So you're not cutting anything, all you're doing is you're doing that. But because you have now got the seam line over here, you can now press that down with your fingers, or you can use the fabulous Roland press, which has been hidden from me. No, it hasn't, there it is. You can just use the little Roland press over here. That's the perfect little tool to use, because you can imagine each one of these, using the iron, getting up and down. I don't know about you, but I like less steps in my life. And I, if I can avoid getting out of my chair while I'm sewing, I will do that for as long as I can. And there you go again, exactly the same thing. You turn that round, that's the stitch line I've done, that's the seam line I had pressed from the iron. I take my roll and press, I do that. So here you've got absolutely no raw seams at all at the top. You're pressing that all nice and down. And then exactly like we did before, I'm now going to stitch these like I have already on these. And I'm just gonna keep adding them as I go. So again, I'll now sew those two together to make two, then those two together to make two. Two will become four. I've already sewn 12 on there, so those four will become eight. And that's just a lovely, lovely way of doing it. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, which was what I was doing before we came to air, is, have I got two minutes? Perfect. I haven't actually shown you how you cut using, using the, the actual ruler. So what I've got here is some of the Tilda Apple Butter fabric, which is also absolutely stunning. But I saw a video this morning online, because when I'm still waking up at four o'clock in the morning, I need something to jolt me into inspiration. So I saw this online this morning and I thought, oh my goodness, what a perfect thing to do for the demo. My talkback wire has now crawled up my arm somehow, forgive me. There we go. So there we go. So what I've done now is I've got four different colors, or three different colors from the Tilda range. Um, and I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna put them like this. 
I haven't even tried this before. I haven't even tried this before, but I'm hoping what I'm planning is going to work. And it should do. <laughs> In theory, famous last words. Just imagine having to explain myself when I go upstairs. Why did you spend so much time doing something you didn't try? They wouldn't do that, they're amazing. Right. This little 550's got some vuma in it. It definitely goes. So, right, what I've got now is I've now pressed this because what I've done with this, and I've realised, I haven't actually shown you how you cut out using the Dresden. And all I'm doing now is I'm just pressing to one side, and I would necessarily press to one side for these. Right. I am. So in my ear, I've just heard, oh, are you going to make a stripy Dresden? And I'm like, uh-huh. And I'm using this gorgeous um, apple butter, butter collection that we've got here from Tilda as well. Oops, that's the wrong one. And you can see we've got all these wonderful solids with the coordinates that go with it. And a lot of people look at that and think, oh, how would I use that? Well, I'm about to show you. Now, as you all know, I like less steps. People will call it lazy. I don't care. I like less steps in my life. Oh, I'm going to press this from the front because I've got a ripple. Sorry. Always the way. So for this, what you would do is you can make strips to do this. Now, I hadn't even thought about this, and I apologize. I got this off a video this morning, released at 5 a.m. this morning, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm in love. So what you're going to do, uh, my cutting mat, you do need these rotating cutting mats. They do come in handy, Matt. They really are fabulous, these. So what I'm doing now is first of all, finding the height that I've got. So I'm gonna call that eight inches and I'm gonna trim off the top. Right. Um, so when you are doing this, make sure you line your all the way up. You can see that the lines need to meet where, meet where you're cutting. So I've double folded this just to save time. And I'm, for a change, I'm turning the mat. It is such a great mat, this, it really is. So this blade, and I've made a bit of a wobble there. So you can see I've just cut that little bit off. It's really important that you are accurate with these blades, otherwise your blade will be wonky through the process. So there are two of our blades. And the great thing is, so I've cut that one initially. I'm going to line that back up, rotating it round. I'm making sure I'm getting the most out of the fabric that I can possibly do. Making sure these are all lined up nice and evenly. So that's the first one. Oh, I think I'm going to get seven out of here. Oh, I think I'm going to get eight, seven out of there. So I'm just going to do that. Now, what I've done is I've got to cut a little bit off this because otherwise they're going to be different sizes. So I'm going to cut them off the nose of each one. If you're cutting them off the nose or the base, it doesn't matter. Just remember which way you've done it. So this one I know I have to cut it off the nose. You can cut one off the nose and one off the base. It's entirely up to you. And then this one I'm just going to square up using the lines on the ruler here. So you can see I've lined my 8 inch line up there. So I've just used little, not scraps, but these were in our basket of bits to use. I'm not going to rotate these. You can then decide whether you're going to do these as fans or whether you're going to do it any other way. But I don't think you can deny that is incredible. Now, I've used the same fabric all the way along for this apple butter. But I want you to just look at this apple butter collection because if I had used if I'd used these in the order that they are, can you imagine? I've used one, two, three, four. So if I'd used those four in the first one, those four in the second one, or even, because these are, these are two inch lines and these are three inch lines, you could do all of them and say do, because I think the ruler goes up to, 
nine inches you could have done a three inch line or a one and a half or two inch line of all of them sewn them together and you would have been able to then have all of them have five and five but you can see what i mean i think this colorway using the solids all the way through the, the, the patterns might not work quite as effectively but equally when you've done that and you've got something so effective maybe what you do is you then space these out if we look at these wonderful um, bundles that we've got over here we've got these fabulous bundles if you then decide you're going to put a purple one over here and then you've got a you've got this one over here you can tell that these are going to work really really well with solids so if i just put those four there which i think are really nice color combinations there but doesn't that pink tie everything in nicely and then if i put that there you can still alternate your colorways you can still alternate your colorways but still have such an effective block so you can just see the different ways of being able to do it so the dresden ruler we've normally only done single pieces of fabric all the way along like i have on this one which is absolutely great and you can see incredibly effective but if you start adding in the contrasting colors into it it does make a totally totally different look and i remind you just simply of doing this one you can see by using just one fabric and adding an alternate fabric in it look how much more effective that is than it is to do, and I'm not saying these aren't effective, but look at that. It just looks so different. And it, I think it actually adds to the fabric that you're buying and the beautiful patterns that you're doing by putting something contrasting with it to just make it pop that little bit extra. So having mentioned that, I'm just going to get rid of all the threads that I've now put all over this fabulous bundle here. This bundle that I've just shown you is called this is called the, the purple bundle, perfect fa purple fabric bundle. You're getting two meters of fabric, a half meter of each of these fabrics. Just move those out of the way. You're getting a half meter of each of these. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, we've got cream, coral, purple, and magenta. Perfect, I'm getting there. Cream, coral, purple and magenta you're getting a half meter of each of those fabrics and that's 12.99 just to remind you of what half a meter of fabric of these look like i'll just show you the one and this will be the size you're getting for every fabric on the next set of bundles that's half a meter so it's 44 inches wide by half a meter obviously as a quilter it's imperial this way and metric the other way very very traditional in quilting terms i need half a meter of 44 inch wide fabric i always find that quite ironic so that is our fabulous purple bundle there and then of course we've got our incredible greens as well which also work very well with our um, apple butter collection that we had there earlier so of the greens we've got emerald mint i don't I can't remember what this one's called that's right emerald mint jade and chartreuse you're getting a, a half meter of each of those that's four half meters two meters for 12.99 and that is such a good price so that's working out at what's that six pounds 50 six pounds 49 a meter that is a really really good price for that for solids and it's such great quality these really really good lovely little combination of colors there's the green and the jade we've also got our yellow collection over here this is just a bright gorgeous sunny summery sunshine thing i don't know if anybody was up watching the sunrise this morning gosh wasn't it beautiful with all those clouds absolutely stunning so there we've got i'm not even going to pretend i know the colors of these so what colors have we got here i know that one's gold is this corn sunshine I think this is the wrong way. So this is sunshine. Is this a vanilla? That's lemon, gold, and corn yellow. So that's sunshine, lemon, gold, and corn yellow. Sorry, my yellows, I can't remember. Those are really quite hard to do. They're really, really beautiful. It's such a lovely color combo way there. But I have to say, I am incredibly excited about this bundle. 
So this is, oh, is this not a bundle? Oh, brilliant, even better. So, as you all know, these have been selling incredibly well, so make sure you do check out the website ASAP on these. These are all available by the half meter. If you want two meters of the fabric, you're gonna be ordering four units, and that will come to you as a two meter cut. So here we have, this is half a meter of, is that cream? Half meter of cream, I think I've got these in the way, forgive me, let me get that out of the way. It's just got too much fabric everywhere, it's wonderful. Sorry, there we go. So that's half a meter of cream. That's three pounds 49. So it's um, just beautiful, love that. So that's the cream. Then we've got, is this pink? This one's called pink. I just think that's a much bit more soft as a pink, but it is such a lovely, lovely pink, that one. That's also available by the half meter there, £3.49. If you're wanting more than a half meter, you just order multiple units. This one's called bright pink. Isn't that just lovely? And here I am trying to hide my microphone with my shirt, and obviously that popped out then to say hello. So that's our hot pink colorway there. Really, really lovely. And then we've got... This is light lilac. Isn't that lovely? Such a gorgeous, gorgeous colorway, this. Now this is powder blue. Can't go wrong with a powder blue. Isn't that just gorgeous? Absolutely lovely, lovely fabric. And then last but not least, we've got silver. Um, and this is proving to be incredibly popular on the website. It's, and we've been, uh, you, you're struggling to get this as a shop. You're struggling to get these at the minute. So you're going to have to be quick. If you're wanting any greys, do not hang around. Greys are very popular. So now we've got all of our fabu fabulous bundles here ready for you to look at and all these wonderful colorways. Let me show you another fabulous ruler that we've got today from Creative Grids. This is the 60 degree 8 inch finished triangular ruler. And again, I'm using the Tilda Fat 8s collection because we had so much left over of it, and this is the bits that I'd cut out and not finished. So I'm going to use this on my rotating cutting mat. So let me show you what the ruler looks like. This is the ruler here that you're going to get. Hopefully that's in the right place. No, it's not. So that's the ruler you're going to get. You're obviously getting your set of instructions again with it. This one does have the QR code on the actual ruler, which is great in case you lose your instructions. But the instructions are really handy. It shows you exactly how to use it, how to make it, what to do in the whole process of using it. And it is a very, very, very user friendly ruler. So all I've done here is now I'm cutting five layers of fabric because I'm confident doing that. Do not cut five layers of fabric if you're not confident doing it. Cut one layer of fabric and no one is going to be cross with you. There's no race. You just take your time and you do it as well as you want to do it. So as you can tell here, my fabrics have shifted a little bit in transit. I'm just gonna line that back up here. So what I'm going to do here now, I have cut this piece at five inches um, wide. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm gonna cut my first piece over there. Now I'm not moving anything, okay? And I'm saving myself some time and I'm lining this up again to the five inch line and I'm lining it up to where I've just cut. Push my ruler down, my cutting back down, and I'm cutting that section over there. So that hopefully has cut, there we go, that's my first five inch stack. Now I'm taking this over here, lining it all up perfectly, and I can see I'm gonna now get my third my second five inch stack over there. There we go, that's my second five inch stack. Now I rotate my ruler around and I'm going to pop this over here to cut my third five inch piece over here. Right, so that's my third five inch strip. Now, every single one of us look at these little bits that are left over and think, oh, well, that's scrap. Nope. Watch this. This is my favorite thing about this ruler. So try and just keep everything nice and, st nice and sa nice the same. Go from there.
Right, so you can see here, what I've done is I've lined in, I don't know if we can zoom, there we go, as if I'm thinking it, it's already happening, I love it. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my ruler and I'm lining it up to see how big a triangle I can cut out. So this bit's already been cut, I'm happy with that. I'm lining my ruler up here and I can see I can safely get a two and a quarter inch cut there. So I'm holding that nice and, nice and tight. And don't forget, you've got your nice flat top for your triangle over there. And there you go. You've got a two and a quarter inch triangle as well. And you'll find, when you always look at my stacks, you will see a combination of little triangles, little tiny baby triangles of things that I can sew together that haven't quite been big enough. But, you know, it depending on how adventurous you are, because I know a lot of you like your miniature quilts, if I've got these nice funny shapes on that, I look at that and I think, no, that's too big. If you wanted to cut a one inch triangle out, well, watch this space. So here, what I love about this is that I want to make sure I am using every scrap of fabric. Now, what I would say is having cut that out, I will put that over here again because I didn't cut the top off. So again, I line that up one inch side and side and then I cut my top off. That's my one inch square. Now, I'm gonna come back and show you how that works, but I'm not finished. No, 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 where are you going? Bring it back, cat. Bring it back, I'm not finished yet. Not finished yet. You can see I've not stopped yet, and I'm determined to make sure I use every single piece of fabric that I can out of this. So uh, you've paid for the fabric, use it. And you see, I've only just used one side of it. I haven't started on this side yet. So I bring that back to the middle. Now, when you're doing the edges, just be aware that piece of fabric is smaller than the rest of them. So the bits that are the smallest, I bring those to the front. And the reason being is you don't want to cut a big triangle out and you haven't got enough. So here, I put my ruler there and I can see, I can get a two and a half, but I might miss a bit there. And over here, I've already cut a two and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut this as two and a quarter as well. So you can get the idea of what I'm doing on all of those. And I'm cutting these down as, f as small as I can get them. And I will cut out a whole load of one inch squares, of triangles. But when I've done it, what are you doing then? So I've got 20 different fabrics and I only need six to do it. So let's start with the baby ones because the baby ones I think are so cute. So you've got that one there. Oh, that one didn't cut properly. Oh, I've lost some. Now they do, you can see when I, when I say to you that you're cutting them small, you can see, there you go. So that one will go there, that one will go there, that one will go there, that one will go there and that one will go there. And you can see that would make the most interesting, interesting triangle. If you've lost your mind and you want to go that small, go ahead, it's gonna be perfect for you. But you can see as you lay these all out, how interesting they look as you go along. And you only need six to make a full hex, but you can see how incredible that looks. And then as you go up in size, you get a little bit more interesting. So this one, I don't have enough of those. So here you can see these are the ones I've just cut out of one block. But look how incredible these are. And not only highlighting your amazing ruler, but also making sure that you get the best use of your fabrics. And you can see, well, let's say you've decided, actually, I want that one to be the same color. You can do that and you can have all three of them being all the same. So you can only use two fabrics to do that. Now of this, you've got between 15 and, between 12 and 15, sorry, 10 and 15 of each of these triangles cut out per strip of fabric. So you can then make your choice. No, it isn't. On the strip that I did, sorry, you've got either two or three of each of these strips cut. So you've got between 40 and 60 different pieces here. So you can potentially make between eight and, eight and 10 of these very, very comfortably out of that. And then you've got all these little scraps and you've still got 
this much fabric left of each one. So I've made three, one enormous Dresden, I've made two smaller Dresdens, I've made 10 of these, I've made this, and I've got these little blocks, and I've still got this much left. It just shows you the value in those fat eights, because I think until you actually see what it is that you're getting, all you look at it and you think, oh, that's actually quite expensive for something like that, but I promise you it's not. You're getting a huge amount of fabric with this, and you've got so, so much that you can do with it. It's a really, really great. But now I'm hearing wonderful news that it's one of our lovely customers' birthday. Happy, happy birthday to Ruth Potts. Happy birthday. I hope you're having the most wonderful day, and I hope you get to do something exciting. And make sure you share us some pictures of what you've been doing. You can get us on our Facebook page and our Facebook fans page as well. So make sure you stay in touch, and happy birthday, Ruth. So we've got two more rulers that I'd like to show you today. We've got the Scrap Crazy 6 and the Scrap Crazy 8. Now what's so great about with all of these is you can do these with all different fabrics. You can do these and you can mix and match them as you go. You'll see that what we've done is you cut your bits out and I've cut out a whole load of bits here before so I can show you. Um, and you know when I said I get a ruler and I get very excited? These are just the bits that I haven't sewn together yet. Because this is just one example of where you, people had bought a bit of fabric and we put some plain fabric to go with it. Um, and it's just a lovely, lovely little way of showing, even if you're using plain solids, and how wonderfully easy this ruler is to use. It's a really simple ruler and a nice way of using up all your scraps as well. And then these are all the different bits and bobs that we had. And these are just bits that were lying on the set. And then if you're using just two fabrics, you can see how effective these are. It's a really, really lovely ruler, this. It's the Scrap Crazy 6 ruler. I'm just popping these back in the bag. And what you're going to get is you're going to get this wonderful set of four rulers here. Now, every time I try and hold all four in one go, it always falls apart. So those are the four rulers that you're getting. And of course, I've got that one the wrong way around. So this is a perfect ruler set to make scrappy quilts. But what's so great is you've got these wonderful set of instructions again, which shows, and you can tell how well used these are, but it shows you how to cut absolutely everything out. And the great thing is, is that it works with virtually every single colorway, doing totally different things each way. Um, uh, but um, bum, bum, is that one going there? I can't remember where I am. Oh, I know what I did here is I cut these the wrong way around because I had half the fabric the upside down. That was what I did on those. But the great thing with this is it doesn't matter which fabrics you're using. Where are my A's? Because the shapes are all completely reversible. That's what I'm looking for. You can put any fabrics you like along here. Now, this is where I'd, I'd had two pieces of fabric and I put them back to front. So you can see that what I'd done is you cut those out and that's how your block comes together. You cut four pieces out and then you sew those two together, those two together, and then you sew those four pieces together like that. And you get all these really incredible different blocks out of it, depending on how you want to do it. Um, so you can see you can do, if you're wanting to do solids, And the bottom pile over here, you can then put that in over there. So you can see you've just, you're absolutely spoilt for choice on how to do it. And using the solids, I think, is a nice way of doing it. But what's really interesting is if you do use the solids, if you pop in this odd, if not odd, but this every now and then you pop in a different colorway, it just works in so beautifully. Because if you can imagine doing those three colorways there, and then just popping that in, it just changes the way your blocks, or if you do the yellow then and you move these out, it just changes your block completely by using two solids and then two patterns. And it's also a nice way of using up those little bit of scraps that you've got at the end of each product. And it's a really, really interesting ruler. It's a lovely one to use. And as you can tell, I had it for one afternoon 
and this is the bits that I didn't sew together. That was just one afternoon. So that was this, and this is my little bag of things that at some point I'm going to find the time to put it all back together. So this is the Scrap Grazy 6 ruler. Again, you've got the normal creator grid scrappy, uh, uh, the non-slip technology on the back, so your, your bit doesn't move as much as if it was on the other side. So it's got all of that available. Really good instructions on how to use that. That's your Scrap Crazy 6. But I actually, I'm not sure which one I preferred more because of the Scrap Crazy 8. Oh my goodness, this blew me away. Absolutely adore this. This one you're only getting three rulers with, but when I say only getting three rulers is, please don't think for one second that means you're getting less of a product because you really, really aren't. It's just you use the rulers twice. So this is an absolutely fantastic ruler as well. And you can see all the different blocks that I've been able to make out of these as well. And we use, I just use solids for all of these. And you can see just how different each one of these blocks came out just by using a different colorway. It was just lovely. It's like I'm flicking through a magazine, isn't it? But you can see, and it doesn't matter whether I've got the ruler like that, or like that, or like that. And this is what I absolutely love about this ruler, is it doesn't matter how you do it. Every single block comes out so differently, but really, 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 really effective. Lovely, lovely way to do it. And I'll just briefly show you how it is that you're doing it. Now, these two... Um, again, using um, solid fabrics, you're able to do this because what I'd done is I'd actually sewn, you can tell that's correct, that's the right way round, but what I'd done is I'd folded the fabric one on top of the other, so I had the inverse of each other, so these two get sewn together like that, which means that it's the different to this one, but it doesn't matter because look how effective they are. It's a really, really user-friendly block that you can use in any way you want. And it doesn't matter if your fabric's the wrong way round, you will make it work and be beautiful. And you can see that's now the right way round. And that's the right way round. And there we go. So you can see you've got loads of different options. And again, you can tell how much I hated the ruler because look, look, this was just literally, I, I try not to spend more than three hours on a ruler, but this is what I cut out with it. And I had so much fabric left. We just did a half meter bundle on this, but it was really, really fun. It was a lovely, lovely block to use. And I have to say that putting these together as a quilt, I think is gonna be stunning. Again, one day when I've got all that time available. So that was the Scrap Crazy 8 ruler. Again, you've got that normal Scrap Crazy technology on the edge there. And just a reminder, that's it. And don't lose your instructions because you've got loads of different patterns on that as well. But we've come to that, my favorite part of a Friday. I have to say, I feel very privileged that every Friday I get to do what's known as Make of the Week. Every single week, Vicky, myself, and Debbie go through the fans page and we, we kind of have a little bit of a stalk. And you make our job really hard because what we do is we look at every single make that's gone onto the fans page every week and we each pick a person and each week that person ends up getting free PNP on their next order. So if your name comes up in the next few minutes, make sure you send us a message on our Facebook um, studio page. Drop us a message and we'll give you a voucher code for free postage and packaging on your next order, which saves you £3.95. So the winners for this week are, and I apologise for surnames in advance, Danielle Victoria, that was easy, um, Ellen Repton and Beverly Duffy. Really fabulous makes. Let's see what Danielle made. Dan is it Danielle or Daniela? Sorry. Look at that jacket. That is stunning. And that bag. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful make. Really, really love that. Well done, Danielle or Daniela. Sorry if I got your name wrong there. Then we've got Ellen Repton. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Rainbows are definitely our theme of the week there. And then last but certainly not least, we've got Beverly Duffy. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. What a lovely quilt. And again, rainbow inspired. I don't even think any of us realized that that was a bit of a rainbow in all of that. Because I certainly didn't realize for my win. So congratulations, all of you. Do drop our Facebook page, uh, Sewing, Street, Sewing Street TV, a line to get your free PNP. We've had a fabulous hour this week. I'm just going to recap. 
So if you've got anything in your basket at the moment, maybe your block of the week that you haven't been able to get out of the box yet, um, make sure you do click at, um, you check out, because uh, once you've clicked and paid for it, it's yours. Until then, unfortunately, it's not. We've had some fabulous things on today. Make sure you check out our early bird, and it's in case there are any of those blue fabric bag holders, the fat quarter bag holders. Oh, so Sorry, sold out, both gone. Can't, I'm not surprised. They're really, really amazing products, those. I'm gonna do our best to make sure we get those back in again for you. And I'm back in tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got a really, really fabulous hour. And I'm gonna clap my hands together because we've got our fabulous fabrics and essential orifice at eight o'clock. We've got my fa uh, foundation paper piecing flower pots quilt and the Alison Glass sun prints quilt that I've um, both designed both of those. And then, my birthday present, I ended up getting the most incredible Elna 720 Pro sewing machine for my husband for my birthday, as well as the Tilda, the Tulip bundles. So I'll be reviewing that and working with that tomorrow with you at 10 o'clock. Uh, you might want to check Instagram later for my unveiling and unboxing of my own little machine, which I'm very excited about. So check Facebook and Instagram for that later. Tomorrow's going to be a really, really good day. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the next show you're going to see after this will be replaying yesterday's show. And yeah, this is a really great idea. So check out on our Facebook page, uh, on our webpage, sewingstreet.com. You'll have the YouTube um, clip there with what the show is now. And then underneath there'll be all products from today's show. So check that out. Thank you all so much for your time today. Stay safe and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.